<laughs> Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today I am so excited to have on an Octon Dreitzuk Jurolt coming aus Esslingen, Deutschland. A 38 year old from Esslingen, Germany. His entire 20 years of pro hockey have been with the Beatingheim Steelers and was one of the team captains for over a decade. He is known as Mr. Beatingheim, playing over a thousand games or a thousand spiels <laughs> with the squad. And out of those a thousand games, the team pretty well won most of them because he is a two time Pokal champion, once with yours truly, and Fumfmall. Five-time Deutsche Meister. I was there for the first one, folks. And <laughs> no one will ever wear number Fumpf again. And that is also how many times he won the championship, folks. Number five is going to the rafters for in Beatingheim. So no one will ever wear it again. Welcome to my kitchen, Rene Schofs. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm really happy that it can be here. Finally. <laughs> it's about time you came on, you punk. Yeah. Yeah, it took a while, but yeah. now you convinced me. Well, um, I guess that how I get into how we know each other, though, is what spurred this on was you did invite me back to Beatingheim, and I really appreciate it, and I'm really, really sorry I can't come. It sucks. Yeah, this would be really cool, but I, I totally understand it. Uh, it's a long way, long trip, and yeah. Ah, but it's, yeah, it's not even that, though. It's like you join the real world, right? You only get so many <laughs> vacation days a year, and... Uh, the Waltons are going to Panama to my parents' place. And then I also um, am going to Cardiff, Wales for, I had already committed and confirmed I was going to Cardiff for Josh, Josh Batch's testimonial. And to think I got invited to two different places in one year, seven years out of the game, that's really neat. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, should, I should I play longer. That's all, true. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would have waited one more year. Then I could have yes, done that yes. one instead, right? <laughs> that's true. Uh, but so... Is it a game? Do you have to play hockey? If I was coming back, would I have to play hockey? Yeah, yeah, that's a plan. I got some some old players there, and I'm pretty excited how they're going to be on the ice. And even myself, I was now on the ice for, uh, the, in January, the first time since April the last year. And then I was just two times now in January, and since that, not, not often. So yeah. I'm really out of shape also, but yeah. <laughs> You will see how it works. Wow. I gave I gave up exercising when nobody was paying me to exercise anymore. I stopped it right then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I totally understand it. <laughs> um, yeah, well, when people were paying you to do it, it make more sense. But now I just like talking to people. <laughs> yeah, that's cool too. So, um, other ways we know each other is I haven't seen you since 2013. Yes. It would have been yeah. playing against you. I would have been Helber on her Falcon, which was really weird. It's the most reviolty team. So, yeah. It I was weird, Falcon, man. It's not... <laughs> it was weird, though, after four yeah. years switching teams to the biggest rival. And um, yeah. Beatingheim, like, felt like home. I had, like, we felt like Beatingheim was, like, home. And, like, we were part of the community. And then I'll never forget the day that, like, it ended up happening. And I signed with Helbrun and... Beatingheim doesn't want me back. And I remember when Helbron came with their team van and we moved our stuff out of the apartment into the Helbron van and drove half an hour down the road. And it was such a weird feeling because our lives were in Beatingheim. We felt like that was home and we didn't think we were going to be going anywhere. Like I thought I'd play my career there. We loved it so much. And then uh, just like that, it changed and it was like, well, it's over. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's in hockey. It can go so quick here, right? But it does. I uh, totally understand it because I really love Beatingheim. I'm not really born here, but like you said, I'm 20, 20 years now here. Met my wife here, the kids, and this is for sure home for me. And I'm very, very happy that it could play pro hockey that long in Bidikheim. That's that's really cool. Well, it says really a cool. lot about you that a team, like, because we, I, I talk around my shed. People that play in, on one team, um, they're special people in, like, the towns embrace them, and they never even once think to ever let the person go. And you played 20 seasons in Bidikheim, eh? <laughs> Yeah. What were you like six, 16 when you started? Yeah, this was my, my, then I just sit on the bench a little bit and, and uh, practice with the boys, but not really playing. But my first real year was with 19, I would say, when I really played 
almost every game or just at least sit on the bench too. <laughs> yeah, I got that um, written down though. You were playing the pro team and under 20s. You were playing like yes. two seasons. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. busy, eh? That's that's busy. Yeah, we played we played uh, Fridays uh, home home team for, uh, home game for example. Then Saturday sometimes with the juniors. Sunday another game with a with a big man. So yeah, yeah. But, but it was cool. I mean, I never knew it different, so I didn't never uh, complained and I loved it. Yeah. Uh so pretty neat number fives going up into the rafters, eh? Like. I've talked about this before is that was always a goal of mine was to have my Jersey retired somewhere. And like when you'd grow up as a kid and you see them up in the, the rafters and you, you just wonder like, who is that guy? How did he get up yeah. there? And, and like, yeah. I think it's so cool though, is that you're the, you're the third buddy of mine. That's now getting his Jersey retired and beating high big, yeah. sexy, Justin Kelly <laughs> shed guy and Dirk Robel. Who's been on, on the podcast too. All shed guys. And that we won together. And now you guys are getting your Jersey retired winning's fun isn't it <laughs> oh winning is the best um yeah, yeah. Uh, this was awesome seasons what we had like 2009 oh my god that's long long time ago a long time ago but but this was one of yeah you never forget your first championship so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had, for me i had lost in the finals the two years before right land suit we lost in overtime game five and then in the coast with Daytona Beach, Ohio, we lost in the finals too. So when we finally won my third year there, I did get carried away at the parade and I did have cut off shorts on, but I didn't know there was a parade and I was doing that for the boys. Right. I told you guys on the way home. I'm like, cause everybody made fun of my jeans. I'm like, I'll cut these off and go downtown for beers with the fellas tomorrow. And then we did that. And then I find out there's a parade and I got no time to change. I got my cutoff jeans on and my dog. <laughs> Yeah, but the, the good thing is that you had your dog. In the end, he just uh, carries you home. And I think you would never find home after the the, the no. party. Well, I it... just I just remember <laughs> one thing. There was a kid coming to you and asking for for signing in Jersey, and you take the pen and you do your signings. And after that, the kid just looked at you like, "Is he serious?" Because you never opened the pen. You just <laughs> do it like that. So the kid maybe never got. Really? Like, did uh, I not? Uh, did I not yeah. sign it then? Things got away from me that day. <laughs> <laughs> they, they did. The second day can get away from you, folks. If you don't sleep enough and you get back into it the next day, things things can go wrong, right? But that's that's that has to be like when you when you. It's part to, of the history, oh, right? Yeah, you, you work <laughs> you work one year for this moment, so in yeah. the end, yeah, you have uh, to celebrate. <laughs> you do yeah. You, well, it's like when you win it and you run a buck. It's like. That's the only time you can really do whatever you want, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a time. Um, so <laughs> I got another way we know each other, though. And this is my favorite thing, I think, ever of my pro hockey career, other than the championships. <clears throat> There's only a handful of guys in the world that were there and experienced this, the erotic photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's something special too. Yes, yes. Had you seen the pictures when I sent you that one? Yes, I, I've seen it. I've seen some. <laughs> I thought, it, I thought it, they it, were it, very it. tasteful. I thought they were very nice photos. Yeah, for sure. I never know why they never came out. I know. They were very <laughs> nice. <laughs> when you, that just brings back so many memories. That day was one of the, like, it was just so outrageous. So folks, I'll tell this tale. Oh, mommy's home. I'm going out to the shed. <laughs> And we're back, folks. And we're in the shed now. Way more fun. <laughs> um, but anyways. I'm yeah, for sure. that, I just opened my beer here now before we talk about this story, what you're yeah. going to start. So okay. I need yeah, more beer yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> so, folks, here's the story. Um, I get to Biedenheim. It's my second year in Germany. I'm still kind of like, I'm still getting used to everything in Germany. I, I, You know, hockey is different in Germany. The culture is different. Everything's different. It's like... Uh, nudity is not as big of a deal in germany and you know what i'm into that <laughs> that's cool but um <laughs> the team says they would put up on like a sheet um the the days that you got to go do stuff promotional stuff and they put up a thing we got a photo shoot on monday uh be at the rink at like 10 a.m so i tell lisa i'm like i got some photo shoot today i'm going to the rink uh we get there there's like six of us me big sexy dotsler you um Kazi, the goalie Yes. And Sarakov. Mm-hmm. So anyways, we get there, folks. 
and um, <laughs> we start getting dressed in our in our game outfits, and uh, then all of a sudden, a uh, bus rolls in with uh, with the the talent, right? The the ladies for the photo shoot. <laughs> um, so then um, we went out and played hockey with um, naked women, and um, they played hockey with us, right? And they were naked, right? And then we had a shot on the bench where we pretended we were playing hockey and they were our coaches and they were naked, right? <laughs> <laughs> totally normal. <laughs> right? They always. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the guy that worked for the team, um, ah, what was his name again? Um, anyways, he says, you guys look really tight. You guys look like you really need to loosen up and have fun with this. Do you guys want some beer? <laughs> and we're like, yes, we do. <laughs> we need to loosen up. So then someone <laughs> went to the store and bought us beer. So then the beer started opening. And then uh, the photo shoot then moved into the locker room. And they had put my name down as the massage. I was supposed to get massaged by a naked gal. And um, the photographer um then decided I did not have the body type for the massage scene <laughs> and they kicked me out of the massage scene and put put Dotsy in right they said they said I was too fat <laughs> yeah didn't have the so body type that, for the massage but, but, scene I mean Dotsy is a machine so yeah I knew what I was up against and I agree I agree yeah. he had a, he and that's another thing when I was at Beatingheim they called me Kugel Blitz right <laughs> <laughs> round lightning folks <laughs> round lightning kugel blitz right so i guess i didn't have the body type for that scene but um that day was it was something and then the final scene of the day um they're like okay uh everybody's gonna get get in the shower now right and i was like i'm not doing that i'm like lisa Lisa would not like that and she'd probably fly home tomorrow if I do that. <laughs> and I don't I don't feel right about that. So I'm gonna sit this one out, right? <laughs> yeah, I think there were just two, three guys. I was I was out too, so but I I was sitting outside and I just on the one hand I couldn't believe it what happened right now. On the <laughs> other hand, I laughed so bad. I, and, I still can't yeah. believe it happened. I'm just <laughs> I'm so happy it happened just so we have these stories because that was one of my favorite days ever of being a professional hockey player, right? It's like when when we came back home after that day at our photo shoot, our promotional photo shoot, and we had had some beers, and then like you tell the story of what went on, and it's like, well, like the team made me do it. That was my job, right? That's my job. Yeah, I think that would not happen in a normal work uh, job. Yeah, it's just something and, special that can happen in hockey. <laughs> and then, folks, they 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 cancel the calendar. Um, <laughs> And then the photos never did um, come out. Um, I had never seen them until I started the podcast. And then I have been yeah. sent them. I had never seen them. And then I get them. And that's what's so fun about doing this is that um, now I get to see that sort of stuff. And I'm back in touch with people I haven't seen since 2013, right? And then, like, man, some of those photos, like, oh, <laughs> something. <laughs> I I also thought it's they're just erased. Nobody will have them anymore. But yeah, you you showed me again. That's awesome. Ah, uh, it's great that I have them. Thank you. I, I won't <laughs> I won't say who sent them, but Donkashun, feel a donk. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. The only rules were <laughs> that I just can't post them anywhere. Which that's fine. I have them. I know what they look like. <laughs> great time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay so that's a great story uh <laughs> anyways other ways we know each other other than winning in 2008-9 um was did you know fun fact the most goals i scored in a season you were my middle stürmer my centerman really nine and swansick that was i think the most i scored in pro 29 that's, that's... That's Did you know? Good. Next fun I, fact. I'm not, I'm not sure if I even scored 29 goals in my whole career. But you know what? You know what else? <laughs> also, is a fun fact is that same year was the most points you ever had in a season was playing with me. Oh yeah, that's true. Einen and Fiertzik. Einen and Fiertzik, yes, in yes. Sieben Fiertzik Spiel. Yeah, yeah, that was a good. That was a good year. Yes, that's well, true. Other than we sucked. <laughs> 
That was the other problem, yeah. Personally, uh, it was great, but uh, yeah, playing playdowns and, and all I, that. It was fun yeah. to meet you and PJ playing together. Um, we had yeah. fun, but uh, we did not have a good team that year. We were oh. we had a lot of young guys that uh, just that they some of them just weren't quite ready for that league. I think you yeah, know, yeah, it was it was a tough year. It was, and it's tough when you go to Beatingheim and we have that huge budget. And like that first year, man, that team, you look at who was on our third, fourth line and who was our sixth, seventh defenseman. What a squad. And then you it go was... from that to a couple years later, how brutal we were. It sucked. Yeah. 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 But yeah, there were more money. But like you said, I mean, even fourth, third, fourth line was so great and so good. <laughs> yeah. They could even be... Uh, second line in every other team, I guess. So, oh, yeah. and I always said that Beckham could have coached that team. My dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, which speaking of the coach there, there we did do some interesting stuff with my time at beating Heim at the start there. Absolutely. We would wear snorkels and run around the parking lot carrying each other, right? Yeah, that uh, all prepared us for the for the big uh, big final. I think in the end. <laughs> yeah, right right that's what it was um i thought the, i found the funniest thing about the training in july was that we would go like crazy monday to thursday we would do like three a days and run like 3400 meters and i hated every second of it it made me hate yeah. everything about it but then come the weekend that most of the german fellows would head home and us auslanders and the local guys we would get after it all weekend, right? We we would have a lot of fun and get to know each other. And it's some of my greatest memories were that we were there in July. But the funniest thing to me was he was doing it for us all to be in great shape. And then he gives me 10 days off at the end of July and tells me I could fly home. What do you think I got up to? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was weird. But like you said, I think that's a, maybe it, it all uh, put us together as a group. Those three times 400 meter uh, during the day, uh, runs and all that stuff so you learn each other even more you start one month early i think it's not even the practice but it's just it's hanging true, out with the guys and coming connected you to, become a to family yeah and yes, you, ha yeah, you do have yeah. fun and uh yeah you, you get through yeah. the 400 meters together and you know that brings you close together that you can do that stupid <laughs> shit but uh, <laughs> but then oh, i hated it that but was, then the weekends my... were fun man the the, yeah. <laughs> the vulcan yeah. end days or uh, and I thought that team, I always say this, the teams that have fun off the ice together win on the ice together. And Monday fun day was a big part of winning that year. Yeah, man, it was, it was always cool. It was, yeah, fun. It was fun. Monday fun days, yeah. folks, we would take turns who would organize Monday fun day and it'd be a different thing we'd do. We'd go to Stuttgart and like go for dinner or we would go to like some festival, right? We'd have fun every Monday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's but hockey. It, that's that's hockey, yeah, yeah. We started we started even with the uh, Pferdemarkt. I think that's the first time when I really get to know you. When the Pferdemarkt <laughs> is a big uh, festival with a beer tent, and yes, I I really noticed in the real world. Though, that's I that's when I that's, that's that's when I really felt at home. Was in a beer tent in Germany. <laughs> You're right. I've never felt so alive. <laughs> The yeah. Fetter market got the best of me, just like the parade, right? <laughs> yeah. <it's> just... <laughs> well, those beers are so big, and I didn't know what they do to you when you drink a few of them, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, can, yeah. But it's always, always when the Canadian and U.S. guys come the first time and then drink the big beers with a little bit more. It's more heavy, maybe, and then yeah, yeah get a bit like carried this. away. Yeah, <laughs> and then you get standing up on the table singing Joanna Dugaily South. That's living. yeah. <laughs> I did have yeah, it written down that. here the Fender market. It was my favorite time of the year because you're the real season. I don't think has really started, right? And you no, can, it's it's just one two weeks before the real season. Yeah, so you and can you, just... and the fellows could just run a buck and like all the fun foods there are to eat. Beating high. Why do you think I got so fat? Right? It's like I know I got fat. <laughs> yeah. you asked me to. Leave. I know. I know. You, you came like this. You were so thin. I, I so totally thin. in shape. I <laughs> I just still recognized. But then BDK made you like that. That's really it. Did bad. So they, you know the yeah. last year I was at Beatingheim, The start of that season was like the most in shape I ever was. And then we kept That's losing, true. and I got yeah. like depressed, and I couldn't handle the losing, and I couldn't handle the culture in our locker room. I couldn't handle how the Germans and imports weren't getting along like they used to. And it was really hard for me that year. And I know it's hard for you. Um, yeah, and I, and I didn't handle it well. And I wasn't the leader I needed to be for that team back then. Um, I could have been a better leader and, um, 
it was brutal watching that, like our culture that year. It was really hard on me. And by the end of the year, I was fat. And then I got the hernia and then I never played again for Beatingheim. Yeah, that was really sad. But I think, yeah, the, the Schweinebraten you missed uh, from, from, from Hammer and all the Schweinebraten you missed in the corner. That brings teams to together battle there. <laughs> better. Yeah, that's, that's true. But even on the ice, yeah, that's what you missed. Well, you think there. you're going to knock me off the puck when we're eating Schweinebraten every Mittwoch? <laughs> <laughs> but no that, it's not even just that. It's like, it's it's like I, it was like they're beefing me up, right? Like I had Manfred the meat guy, <laughs> right? Oh yeah, that's my just, sponsor. Manfred is the best. My, oh, yeah. my my jersey was sponsored by Manfred the meat guy, and I would go there <laughs> once a month, and he would give me bags and bags of meat of like the highest end meat in the world, right? And you wonder why I got fat. <laughs> and and he doesn't have the small pieces; you just get the four kilo, uh, the full fillet, steak, grump yeah. steak, and everything. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, I remember the first time I went there, he gave me like a filet piece of steak from like Argentina that like oh. it was hundreds of euros and he just gave it to me. <laughs> and like, I can't control myself around food and beer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Good combination. Uh, but I can't, I, so your jersey getting retired April 1st. Is that right? Yeah, that's the plan. Yes. Is, so then you play a game and then they put it up there after. It's just like when we played a Dirk's game, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We played it together, right? Yeah. Yeah, we did. And we were on the real team, but then uh, we played for Dirk's team and our team, the real team that we had sucked the whole mm -hmm. time. I remember that because I'm pretty sure we were 20 games into the season. And I had like 20 goals and it was the best I had ever been playing. And our team was awful and I couldn't have any fun and nobody could have any fun. And then we played in Dirk's game and our team got to drink beers out of the water bottles and they had to drink yeah. water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but that was, uh, I think maybe that's the reason why I always said the, the first uh, thinking was also we play, we make a team and we play against the real team. Yeah. And, and I never said no chance because for the real team, it makes totally no fun. Doesn't matter yeah. how, when, never. Why so would I we... want to play a real team when I'm like fat and out of shape now, right? <laughs> yeah. It makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. See? And so that's why we said, hey, we do two teams there and then just play a little bit each, uh, against oh, no. each other. That's, and, that'll yeah. be fun. And I really wish I could be yeah. there. This would be awesome. I think there could be even like you had some some buddies from from there you could play against uh, with with each other again. And, yeah, yeah, well, I guess you haven't announced who's all coming, but um, yeah, I'm sure but I big know sexy, a big sexy, little sexy would be would you be imagine getting a dynamic again. duo back together? I can't believe we never played together again. But I gotta go back at the house now. One second. <laughs> So April 1st, eh? So you're saying Big Sexy's going to be in the building then, or you don't know yet? Maybe. It's a really good, really good chance, I think. Really good chance. Really good um, chance. You know, yeah. it's really sad I can't be there. To think of, like, getting to hang out with you and Justin again, I know it would be just, like, 2009 all over again. And it's the same as, like, when I went back to Cardiff last year, you see your buddies. You just fall yeah. right back into how it was, right? <laughs> And that's why I'm really looking forward so so bad on the on the game there because I see from different day years some guys and just yeah. yeah like you said you think about the good time what you had together spent together and uh, I'm really excited. You should be yeah you've earned it um, and I can't believe how many times you won. Um, I always talk yeah. about how I think it takes you have to learn how to win like you have to do it to understand it and what it takes and you kind of get addicted to it right and like. After you win, you take the losses even harder. Like I did after yeah. we had won and then we weren't good. I took it so hard and I couldn't deal with losing anymore. And, you know, I remember being the kid at the start of my career that like when we lost in Dayton or Lansuit, like I would see guys crying. I wasn't one of them. But then come the end of my career, when we would lose, I would be that guy crying because you know what it could be like. <laughs> I totally understand because yeah, I had I uh, had uh, or was lucky that we the first time when we had 2009 the championship I would just go into final and win, but after that I also went into finals and lose the final and you give all your heart and give everything but you're just not good enough maybe you get some injuries whatever but in the end it's it so tough happen. than to to lose, but I, like you said hockey is so much more fun if you win if you get a good team yes. and you just win together so much more fun man that, just a difference. That, that last year at beatingheim i it, i honestly like it was like i was going through depression there when we were losing so much and i cared so much and i know you did too and then like they do bring in that new coach and he didn't like yes. me but then i also know 
that like PJ and Dougie were on two year deals. And if a coach is going to come in and make it his own and make it his team, um, you got to change some of the imports. And if the other guys are yeah. on two year deals, that's uh, like, but like, I just, I didn't really enjoy how he did it. He wouldn't talk to me. He never talked to me ever. He talked to everybody else. Um, it was a very strange time in my life to be dealt yeah, with that way yeah. by a coach. I had never, I had never had a coach not like me before. It's the first time. I'm glad that I never had a coach who didn't like me, honestly, I think, but, or at least he never told me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I totally understand that. I, 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 over the years, you, you know so much uh, stories about those. And I think that's one of the worst in hockey that it's not uh, open. Yeah you, yeah, you can't talk about just, it. Just, just, just say it. If yeah. it's like that, then just say it in the face. And, and, and you know what? If, if, if he comes like in, a... yeah, if he comes in and tells me like, Matt, if you play really hard, you play really good, you know, we'll see about next year. But like, I do need to make changes here and maybe you're going to have to look elsewhere instead of he, I know what he, yeah. it was crazy. He'd bring in PJ and ask him who he wanted to play with. PJ would say, mm. I want to play with Waldo and Renee. And he would say, why would you want to play with Waldo? He doesn't pass to you. <laughs> and PJ's like, what? <laughs> and he's like, he, th he thought like PJ's not going to come out and tell me that after the meeting. And it's like, yeah. why are you doing this to me? You loser. <laughs> Yeah, that's a nice that, but that's uh, I think that's a big, big problem in in hockey. Just yeah, if if I, they want you, then they they they. Uh, I, I, I'm more of an open and honest type but, of a guy. Yeah. Just tell people yeah. what it's like, and it's yeah. like it's like when I talk to the kids nowadays, I just call it how I see it. Right? It's yeah. You know, I I told this kid Colby played against this year. I told the old man, I'm like, tell your son his line played the best together of any line I saw all season. He said wow, that's really kind of you. I'm like, well, not really. I'm just telling you what I saw. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah, just the truth. That's, um, yeah. Fun times. What I got written down though for <laughs> how we know each other <laughs> is we've gone through a lot of it, but you know, I always talk about how the world's not that big when I'm in my shed is uh, I had Evan Mosey on who was playing for Freiburg and we're talking in the shed on the podcast and he goes, I was in Germany and I'm watching the jumbotron and they got this video for a guy in Beatingheim. And he's like, all of a sudden you were on the big screen. And I was like, Oh yeah, that's uh, Yeah. Yeah. That's the five. Yeah. True. Yeah. That, yeah but was... like when you think about reconnecting, that was the first time we somewhat reconnected and had a few messages back and forth because uh, Cora, your wife reached out to me and I made that little video and then they put it all together and you had all the dandies from your career, um, saying a little message to you, but that would have been a pretty neat day when that comes up on, on the jumbo trot eh? and bring back some <laughs> memories or what? <laughs> yeah. Especially before the game, it's, uh, really emotional too, but it's just awesome that I, that I could uh, have this. Yeah. Yeah. This all those messages, all those videos, I just keep headed on my my laptop, and it's cool to watch it again. And yeah, sure yeah. And the only the only bad thing was uh, it was right through Corona, so in the end there was no fans allowed at that, that game. I, we just played it without fans, and I. It's also it's not the same without fans. It's just not. Uh, it feels every game feels like a practice game, and it's not fun. And at least my my closest family were were allowed to come to that game, so at least there was somebody. But yeah, uh, that's it is different, right? That you don't get to celebrate it with the fans because yes. um, yeah. the the fans are the most important thing. And yeah, I loved the fans of beating him. I had loved my time there. And uh, what another thing, how we know each other though, is you are Mister Beatingheim, and I do remember when I played at Beatingheim when I'd come out. Um, they would say Mister, right? They'd say your first name. Yeah, and then yeah. For me, I got a Mister, and I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever that they say that, I, and like, I loved it so much. I'm like, I'll play here forever. I don't want to go anywhere. And then, but I, I never know. But it's just you. I think they always say just you with Mister, Mister Brand. And, yeah, <laughs> and it, it was so cool because the year before when I was in Landsuit. Mister yeah. Brand Dietrich, Brand Dietrich, the guy I wore number ten because of growing up. Um, was because of Brandon Dietrich. And then I become his line mate in Landsuit. And when he would come out on the ice in Landsuit, they would say, Mr. Brandon. And then the crowd yells Dietrich. And then the next year they started doing that for me and beating high. And I'm just like, this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> and, yeah, then they asked the me to and then they asked me to kindly leave. 
<laughs> no, but the fans they loved you. I mean, you, yeah, you, you I loved, I lo- I loved it there, and I, like, it it was it was. I saw the picture of you with CeeLo and Justin, and mm-hmm. th- were those the only guys still around from our championship? Yes. The next one, yes. But and, I mean, that's, that's the, the the next one was 2013, so this was they were alone. So what? Oh no, no, that's not true. Maybe with Barry, Barry was still there, and Marcy Neumann, yes. But then it was, uh, oh my God, I, you know, you, I won so many championships. I totally forget. No, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. No, but, <laughs> but it's because was, uh, Justin, uh, Justin wasn't on that one, right? Because you, no, he wasn't on. He was, he was. You want to know what the best know. part about all of this was? After Beatingham asked me to kindly leave, and then they bring in the Rodmans, who were awesome, and McKnight, and then you guys went right ahead and won the championship the next year. <laughs> um, Matt, I think. <laughs> Thanks guys. Year later, but yeah, we, that, that, yeah, like you said, yeah. we had one. It was when I was playing at Helmrod. And, you guys ended up winning yeah. the championship and it's like, Oh, those fans totally forgot about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe now they forgot about you then. Yes, that's true. <laughs> but, but it was for me, it was so cool too. After such a bad year of laying play downs, maybe even go down a league. Uh, you came back and there was a hell of a year too, because from well, out of nowhere, you guys had we a budget to again. To... Yeah, because you had a budget again. Because he brought in better players because they had a budget. It takes <laughs> geld to win, folks. That's money. Yeah, that, that that's uh, for sure. It's it's uh, one point, but in the end, I think it's. But it's a good the, the team, it's a good team because everybody's were... coming out of this shitty season who's yeah. staying there. But for sure, I mean, the Rodmans, they were unbelievable. They, they were, were sick. But it's like, and then, you know, it, it sucks for a guy like me, right? And I was, uh, you know, when you get asked to go and then you head to Hellbrod and like, it was a strange year for me. Cause like, I remember coming back and going out for dinner with all the beating head guys and it just felt so weird. Right. Like, uh, that's yeah. like, um, but anyways, like when that happens, you almost, you want the Rodmans to suck. And then when they were awesome, I was like, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but you know what's fun, and you know what I'm over better. all of it now, right? Because if I wouldn't have been asked to kindly leave, we wouldn't be standing here now, and I wouldn't have all my friends in Cardiff. I wouldn't have all my friends in Denmark. I wouldn't have the network I have if I wouldn't have moved on, and I wouldn't have done other things. Um, so I'm actually I'm over it all now. And you know what's funny is I've already talked to David Rodman. He's gonna come on too, and then I'm gonna talk awesome, to the guy yeah. that took my job and beat a guy. But I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, even that season we had like two, two, two um NHL guys because there was a lockout, so we had a really a special team. And for me, it's something special too. To oh, know your NHL. your NHL guys were that Bailey, right from the Islanders. Yeah, just Bailey. Yes, yeah. He Who's was the other guy? TJ Galliardi was there oh, too. Oh, that's right. So I mean, they were just from one month, I guess. Yeah, one month, and not for the playoffs, but still, it was just uh, different. Yeah, I heard that too. Bailey was really good. I think it was. Yeah, was I good. think it was PJ that said, "Man, I haven't been on the ice with a guy like this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we had our NHL players that year too. It, what a weird year, eh? When all the teams yeah, was, had NHL yeah. players. Yeah, yeah. That was um, crazy, but it was also fun. I mean, you never have it in this in my career. I will never have it again. So, no, right? Yeah, it's like so, you watch the NHL uh, and I see Jonathan Bernier yeah. and I'm like, man, that guy is my teammate a long time ago. <laughs> or even in the other teams, they had some names where you thought, oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Clark <laughs> MacArthur, when playing against him, I thought that was cool. And Wayne yeah. Simmons, right? Simmons was in in, in Krimichar, I think. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it was cool playing against those guys. It was interesting to see how you match yes. up against them, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so where and what are you doing now? Oh yeah, um, the, the the good thing is we just settled down in Bidikheim. It's in Basikheim, maybe you know. It's a little town next to Bidikheim, the best uh, wine town in Germany. Um, so we got uh, we got a building here, our apartment uh, in Koras, my wife's uh, grandparents' place. We mm-hmm. we build it and renovate everything. And on my, as you can sit on my balcony and looking right on the on the wine yards and the wine mountains. So there. is that one of your poster pics? Was the glass of yes. wine with the vineyards there? Yes. That's that's your yeah. balcony. I mean, there? you you can't see a lot because the sun is, but it's awesome. The sun is going down in the summertime behind the wine yards, and I can just picture is- it because you know what I'm thinking of, and that's what I love about doing this. All the memories that flood back is when we're talking about vineyards the day we went to the vineyards with the Neumanns and big oh, yeah. sexy 
And um, that was when Lisa and I got our engagement photos taken, was at the vineyards there. And then we had a great night and I was new on the team. And I remember when Marcy's old man showed up and I gave him like a big hug and he was the president of the team. I'm like, I love it here, man. Uh, (laughs) Same uh, night, big sexy's mom walked in on me taking a dump because I didn't know which one was the men's or the women's yet. And I was taking a dump (laughs) and I thought it was going to be Justin walking in. So I just let the door stay unlocked. And then it was his mom, and I was taking a dump. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope she forgot about it. <laughs> There's no way she forgot about that. <laughs> we laughed about it for the rest of the time, but that's weird too, right? Is that I never played with Justin again after that year. So that first year, yeah. me and him had a great season, and oh, then awesome. we win the championship, and then that was why I went back to Beatingheim was because I knew he was coming back, and I thought. Well, if we play together, there's no way I'm not going to do good. And then uh, my knee went four games, or I guess in the first preseason game. And then I played the first four games. And then that was that. I just ate pizza and got fat. (laughs) Uh, That was a bad year for you. It was a Uh, tough year. But you practiced a lot to come back again. (laughs) The sun. Gosh, you're bringing back yeah, bad did, memories you, now. You're always you supposed to, to bring back the but, good memories. But, did but, you know that? You, you, didn't you have to, to cycle in the sauna for that or something? Every day. Or maybe, every day. Yeah, every day. Yes. It was New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Britton called me. <laughs> oh, yeah. He called me New Year's Eve and says, come in for a meeting. And it was like dinner time. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm out with all the guys for dinner um, on New Year's Eve. Like, I'm not coming to the rink right now. And I'm done for the season. Like, what? why? So then I came in the next day, New Year's Day, and he said, so, are you done with hockey? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? Like, no, I'm still here and I'm hurt for the year. I'm trying to show you I, I want to be here. And um, he goes, well, you look like you're done. You look, you can see in your face how fat you are. He goes, you, you, you must be done with hockey. And he says, if you want to play here next year, if you want a contract here, you're going to do everything I say for the rest of the season. And holy moly, it turned into <laughs> 90 minutes a day riding the bike in the sauna every day, 90 uh, minutes a day. That's awesome. In between, yeah. my, in between my bum and my, that area in between sitting on that bike for 90 <laughs> minutes a day um, was it, it was, it hurt so much. I could hardly walk i couldn't sit down um and it was every day and i remember you guys would go for practice and i'd try and get out at like 75 minute mark and old franz right <laughs> oh, franz was franzi awesome. franzi i'd get out and he'd go well though nine six minutes <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like franz whose team are you on here <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i i did it and i did get a contract for next you fight year, right? through and you get a contract that's true so that's that's good i, I guess uh, so right good how but did you have any bad injuries it looked like you played pretty much every year oh, like all I'm, of them i can be so so happy and lucky that that i just have one bad injury i think it was the the, the year after our championship i just broke my uh i don't know how you say it, my spine a little my spine is a little bit damaged so I was out for the rest of the playoffs. So this was the last pre- uh, season game. And then I was just out of the playoffs. I couldn't play the great playoffs against, I think, Schwenningen and, and Landshut. And there was a lot of mm-hmm. lot of going on with uh, all the Landshut guys also. <laughs> and, but I couldn't play it. So that's, that's I think, the only big injury. So I was really, really lucky over those lot of years. Yeah, I would play that many years and only have an one minute like man guys get hurt you see it all the time and being hurt sucks that was the hardest times yes, i had yeah. was being hurt that year i hurt my knee and i had to watch you guys all year and then you guys would be going on the road and i'd be stuck at home doing nothing it was a very difficult time for me being hurt is awful yeah totally i agree yeah yeah so you got kids now eh yes yeah what do you got seven seven and four older boy and a younger girl and it's a boy so, playing ice hockey? Yeah, he's playing ice hockey, yes. In beating yes. In beating yeah. That's yeah, cool. I think there was uh, no chance for him to do this, something else. But he wants still, he wants to play soccer too, and maybe tennis and whatever. So, yeah, just yeah, just, just have fun, see. be a kid. <laughs> yeah, yes, totally. Yeah. So, who are the coaches of beating Now, don't, isn't it in Germany that the minor hockey coaches, like, that's their job? Like, they get paid to do it? 
So in Biedigheim, it is. That's that's really good. They're really professional in, in, in junior hockey. They got really a lot of uh, um, paid coaches there. Um, usually where I coach, for example, in Esslingen, we never had a had a coach who he who's just a coach. He was right. always working. Yeah, just a volunteer. But in, yeah, but in but in Biedigheim, it's different. But they're pretty professional. Yeah. Yeah, well, that'd be cool because I just love coaching. It's my passion now. Like that, I love it. I I just got back from this weekend. Zoe's team, that my team, my under nine gals. Um, we just had our first hotel tournament, and it was it was memories. It's like these kids aren't gonna forget this any day soon. Um, they had a blast. They worked their butts off, but then we also had tons of fun. We had a water slide in the pool, and I did do the biggest belly flop I could ever do. Um, <laughs> And uh, then we, I did that the Friday night. Um, and then Saturday, uh, the girls were like, you got to do another belly flop tonight. Like you have to. And they're like, we're doing it with you. And I'm like, really? I'm like, well, that sounds fun. And fun is fun. And uh, we ended up lining up like 12, 13 girls and like their siblings and myself. And we all did a belly flop at the same time. And it was hockey. It was awesome. <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, it, I I also coach a little bit uh, for the junior teams where my son's playing. So just uh, and he's in Esslingen. To... No, he's in in BDK, yes. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I try to be there like one two times on the ice and just help the coach. And yeah, it's it's cool. It's it, because you can yeah, they can learn so much from you. You can give them so much. And like you said, it's uh, special to 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 have those young kids and teaching them something and maybe. Well, yeah, I, it's probably, yours is probably young enough now though that it's not really like a real team and stuff like when yeah. i really started loving it is when we're a team for the year and we're playing other towns and like you get to practice with the same girls every week and go to the games and then you get to see your team grow and become a team and like to yeah, see my, do. is that they, what they he's do. in already yeah, yeah. yeah he's in the, in the under nine so he's playing a yeah, that's couple like of tournaments yeah and that's awesome. So you go to other to other uh, cities and play there, and yeah, that's cool. And then, and like you they, said, they become there's... buddies for life, right? Like those yes, are their buddies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you see that they're really good connections. Uh, some guys, and yeah, that's that's awesome. Well, I guess another way, though, I another thing I did bring up is when we're talking about family and stuff. Is uh, your brother Pascal was on our team, yeah. and um, yeah. I found it interesting. Was my last year in Beatingheim was also his last year in Beatingheim. And he scored mm -hmm. 24 points as a Fatidiger, as a defenseman, folks. And to think yeah. he never played in the second league again after that is crazy to me. Yeah, I think he was, even in this year as a, as a defense, I think he was top 10 defense in the whole league. So he was he was doing pretty good. Uh, yeah, but then he went to, to Frankfurt and he had a good time there too, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, when they went up to the second league, he quit hockey and he... He's his own boss now. He had a, a plumber. I think it's plumber. He's a company. plumber. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My dad and my my uncle were before, and he took over the the, the, the job or the the, the uh, company. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So he's yeah, well. That's cool. He's busy. Running, yeah. Well, running your own company is, I guess, you you if you got to work to make the money, right? And he must have to give her, right? And but yeah, uh, there's a lot of opportunity. You get into that and you got a good work ethic, which I know your brother has. I've seen him run 400 yes. meters. I know how hard he can work. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him run 400 <laughs> meters holding weights, folks. <laughs> holding weights. That was, you I, remember I, that? I did, uh, that was the worst I ever did, but we did it. And I think, and some, the gods have, have uh, uh, <laughs> shown us some, so much rain in the end that we just did it, I think twice, or maybe we did it just one time. I'm not sure. But then we we went into the dressing room and even the coach said, okay, now we quit. Maybe we had to jump another 150 times squat jumps or something for sure. But that Man, was all better than running with the, those the weights. weights. Oh, oh my God. I would like carrying people up hills on your back and the workouts we did, man, like, whew. man, yeah. if. I, if your brother can get through those, I know he's got a work ethic. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's a good thing if you if you if you do that sport and yeah, like you said, you do something like that, then you're prepared for everything, I guess. So <laughs> and it's true though; you can take it into the real world. It's like I know I can work harder than other people is because I've done that with you guys. <laughs> I remember not being able to walk; I could hardly even like wipe my ass. I was so sore. <laughs> oh yeah, there was like you said from Monday to Thursday, and then on Thursday you were just down uh, but uh 
I, I, would, I, anyway. I, I, yeah, I, I would be so sore. I'd be so pissed off that we had do, to do that. I would get right after it <laughs> with Dougie. <laughs> we'd hit I, the Stuttgart Foos Ganger zone and we'd sit outside <laughs> and watch people, right? <laughs> It'd be a fun time. Yeah, that's what you have to do for sure. When you, even, I think, did, did, were the wives there already? No, huh? you nope, were there just was singers. Ki- kind, kind of Frau. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's Kind of Frau uh, in Yuli. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that's perfect. That's when teams <laughs> become teams, right? <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah. all all the fraus also left before um we won the the championship that year too because when we won not, like it was just the guys oh, around there oh, yeah. Was, yeah none of the yeah. wives were around and that's when like things can get away from you that second day right like it wasn't my fault beating him i'm sorry <laughs> and if that kid <laughs> if i didn't sign your jersey i am very sorry i meant to. <laughs> <laughs> no i i think maybe you you figured it out somehow maybe it was not just signing that I, I would hope with over the four years i was there i would have got that thing signed for him right <laughs> <laughs> i guess so yes yeah what, but uh, like you said about a, about a practice um i also said uh, i played now for 20 years but if if i don't know it was six seven eight years ago somebody would came to me and say hey we get a coach he wants to start in july and we do exactly the same workout what we did in july i think i would quit talking even earlier that's for sure i, I honestly <laughs> it, it was like it was People don't understand what we're saying. I don't think they understand what we did. Um, I couldn't believe I couldn't sleep the night before because I had so much anxiety. I'm like, am I gonna am I gonna die tomorrow? Like it yeah. come the sixth or seventh or eighth, four hundred meter when they're timed and you had to keep getting faster every time. And like he's yelling, too long, son. Too Everything. long, son. Too long, I'm done. And then you cross the line and feel like you're gonna puke or pass out, and then He'd be like, okay, again. <laughs> yeah, the worst and the worst thing was also those challenges when you you when you just run against another guy, oh. and the, the, and the whoever won was guy, done, right? Yeah, yeah, he was done, and then you give everything, but you just just lost, Lose by and then a you bit. have to do again two minutes oh later. My God, <laughs> oh, seriously though, just I remember every time when we would just walk over the soccer fields, and I would see the track, and I would see where we were going and it it would just make my heart and my my guts would just it would i would just feel sick to my stomach but honestly i walk i walk with my dog sometimes around that soccer field around the track and um i think even the first years like you said you still have those feelings and said oh but it gets better and better and now i just and and then we just memories and we got to talk about it we'll get it off our chest and then you feel better i feel much better after i've said a lot of stuff it's like (laughs) to be honest um like i did i love beating heim there and i when the budget went down and there are people that said like you stick with us the budget's gonna go up um you're one of us you're on this team and if you stick with us through this budget thing um, we're not going to be as good, but you stick with us. We're going to come out the other side here in a couple of years. And then you do that and then it changes and they don't want you back. And I understand that whoever's in charge makes those decisions. And realistically, yeah. I'm not going to want to play for a coach that doesn't want me. So it is what it is, but yeah. um, it, I, I really, I can't like, I hated beating him and how it all ended and how I just got in that van and went to Hellbrown and nobody even seemed to give a shit. And I was like, I cared so much about this town, about the people, about this organization. And it's like, now I just get in the van and nobody even gives a shit. And I just leave. And that's that I did. I was wound for years and you know what, talking about it, I get it off my chest and now I feel better, you know? And I wish I could come back for your game and see all you guys. This would be so awesome. Yeah. I would even love to see your family, your kids and everything. I'd like to meet yours. I saw saw your dog right now. I'm not even know what's, what's the name of your dog now i mean i love uh, Beckham so much uh, i know Beckham was one of a kind what a dog <laughs> oh he was awesome wasn't he and then he'd come in the locker room before practice and he would beg for everybody's breakfast and then we'd go we'd go out for practice and practice and then i'd come in and he would just start ripping around the locker room full speed and then i'd walk him home for practice and that was our day of work like talk about a fun day at work <laughs> That was yeah. being a hockey player was fun. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's another life. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I enjoy now my life too. But well, what yeah, are you it's doing? Totally now? different. Oh yeah, I never said. Uh, I'm. Uh, I studied uh, during during my hockey years. I studied always in the summertime, and I'm automotive engineer. And what? now I work for a company here, and it's really cool. It makes fun. I got a cool team. 
But yeah, like you said, it's it's different. I'm totally I'm, different, I'm, though. I'm totally enjoying my on the SA. You're an automotive auto- engineer, and you yeah. just retired from hockey. Were you already doing it before? Were you like doing apprenticeships and stuff? Or uh, yeah, I, I did I did a little bit before. So I I finished 2015 my 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 school, and then I was uh, that, that was when my son was born. So I I quit or I did nothing for for two or three years, and then I start start working a little bit like like just 10 hours a, a week something like that just to to, just to come get experience, to, to, to yeah. get experience yeah because so then you when need. you stopped playing hockey um did you just like apply or you did you start working full-time for the company you're already with uh no i i applied to another company but but in the, that company i did my bachelor uh thesis so uh so i know some guys before and i know that i would like it there and i know uh, that this is a job i would yeah do yeah. maybe the rest of my life. So, wow. yeah. So that's I cool that you can jump right it. into it right away. And like, like you had a good plan set up because there's a lot that, of hockey guys yeah. that are very confused when they get out of the game. Totally. And I saw it a lot of times too. Like you said, maybe, maybe like you said, maybe you, you wanted to play three more years, but then you don't get a contract anymore. You don't want to move again, maybe, or whatever. So I always had in mind that I, that I do this after hockey and I even, uh, made the decision during the, my last season and I had also uh, my contract signed even before the hockey season was done so I just knew what happened so I totally was so how did you decide focused. to shut it down how did you know you were done I mean we, we went because I, I see past- you look like you're in good enough shape and I know the type of player you were you could play on the top line, you could play on the fourth line because you just gave her and you played hockey the right way and you could play anywhere in a lineup. So I know you could still be getting contracts if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's true. But first of all, I never wanted to move like the last the last five years. I would never have wanted to move somewhere just to play mm. hockey because my family raised up here or close yeah. up here and everything. But um, yeah, for me, we went, went to the DAL. I mean, the first league in Germany and I but never expected uh, that 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 I would play there anymore because I played, like you said, a thousand games in the DL2, so in the second league. And so I had the chance uh, to play in the DL and you never know what comes after. And we were for sure not the best team, but we still made it and we we, we, we keep uh, the team in the league. And that was my, my main goal there. But I said, this is the highest that I could finish. I mean, I yeah. can't can be better. I played my whole... Uh, career in the second whole you guys minutes, win it and, yeah yeah win it and, and then also i i mean you know how it is in hockey then maybe you get two two more imports or two extra imports two extra germans and maybe you sit have to sit in the stands yeah. watching the game because you're sometimes you're getting older and slower i mean i feel it i, I you uh-huh. know it also it and, happens and yeah. then, and then I, I don't want to be in that uh, way just to to sit there and maybe watch uh, what what i would love to do hockey playing hockey so this was the right timing for me to say, hey, yeah. now we need a cut. And also my, my son came to school. So he had this normal life. So this Monday to Friday, normal life. Saturday, Sunday is, is, is family time now. So that's awesome too. That's, that was a big, big uh, point in my decision too. Well, and yeah, when you're playing the DL and the DL too, though, like you are weekends are hockey time. Right. And it totally, would be tough yeah, with yeah. kids. Right. And then he's getting into his own hockey and you're going to want to be there yeah. for that. Um, yeah, I get it. Uh, my question then is um, cause when we won the second league in 2008, nine, we were supposed to go to the DL. That was yeah. the whole deal. That was the whole <laughs> point of the thing. And we win it. And then it's like, okay, I'm on a team that loves me. The coach likes me. I got big sexy with me. And it's like, if I go to the DL with this team, it's going to be the best situation ever. Cause I'll probably be playing like second line and I'm going to be getting power play. And then all of a sudden I could have been a DL player the rest of my career. We yeah. don't go right. Yeah. And the same with all of us and we don't go up. And then my knee goes out in a second league the next year and I miss a whole year. And then all of a sudden I'm a second league player the, my whole career. And then I'm not even asked back. And it's like, I could have been up there. And it's because of the budget and it's for all of us. That sucks. Yeah. yeah like you said, there I was 24. And that was like when I thought about the DL for sure. And hey, I could come and go up. With You'd be because, going up with beating high, which is kind of like your hometown yeah, almost. Right? Yeah. 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 And, 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 but yeah, 
this this can't happen or won't happen because of the rink. We had just a shitty old rink there. Well, and, and we'd then also like uh, with the bonuses they had put in our contracts, we pretty well got them bankrupt there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's say uh, that was not my fault. The next that was their fault. The they... That was Sorry, not my fault. It was yeah. your fault. <laughs> Kelly, Martinovic, <laughs> all the lunch food guys. <laughs> I just earn. I think I still earn good money, no chat, no problem. But but you guys, ah, <laughs> uh, it, it, it was the the bonuses they put guys contracts was once we got to eighty points, it was two hundred fifty yeah. euros a point <laughs> per player on the team, and a win is three points, folks. So every win you get twenty or so guys making 250 euros a point that's gonna add up on a squad <laughs> that's that was a lot and i just i just always when i think heard of this i think about my brother because he was i think it was his first or second year so he earned <laughs> they were just maybe the kids. 250 euros a month or something so yeah. nothing or i don't know maybe more but and then we got to 80 points <laughs> to the 80 points he was celebrating so bad and all the young guys for sure and me too but it was I mean, they, they just double double the because, paycheck for yeah, the year. Yeah, those so. kids, those kids that were like just trying to break into pro and weren't making any money, <laughs> they'd be showing up to the next road trip with like new like portable DVD players or new <laughs> laptops. <right? laughs> yeah, it was cool. That was a nice, nice year for for me. Yeah, folks, we got to eighty points and we lost the next game, and then we never lost another one. Right? I think we ended with a hundred and five points. Yes, something like that. Yeah, it was it was good. The good season, folks. <laughs> <that year. laughs> uh, but yeah, then the next year the budget started going down, and then it kept going down, and then and we the also had the problems there, that that Porsche wasn't the the big sponsor anymore. It was a big, yeah, big because uh, they were almost going tits up, and man, it was. It, but it's, it's so different, right? And it can bother guys like us because we win it. We beat Munich. Munich yes. comes back with basically the exact same team next year <laughs> that we could beat when we were better. And then they win it and they go up to the DL and it's like, then all their imports and all their Germans, they're all considered DL players now. And we're all sitting there going, well, we just beat them the year before. For, for me, it was even worse. One year later, no, no, one year, uh, 2013, we, we had the new stadium. So we had everyone set up for the, the DL and we played the final against Schwenningen. And there was a license open from, from Hannover. So, and we thought, okay, the team who's going to win the final, they will go up. up. So, and we won the final. We were not the zero, zero two down in the series, but we came back and beat those guys, and it was awesome. And we really thought again, hey, maybe we can play next year DL. But then um, I think they just this, they just paid double they, the money. What they, we, they, what they what bought we the license, the, right? They yeah, just they bought, bought it. The they license, didn't win yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So they didn't win it. It just bought it and went up to the end. That's And then, then, and then the their player, Germans uh, and their imports were that DL players. I, I'm pretty sure with Hellbrun, that was the team that put us out in the first round that year. And they were a good team. Um, yeah. But yeah, like then they go up and then it's interesting, right? When it comes to finding jobs and stuff as imp, as players, it's like, once you have the DL and it shows like you're working your way up and like people don't know how it works. And it's, you know, um, when people have DL on their resume, it looks a lot better than us second it's, leaguers. It's <laughs> also, also when you, also when you're talking about contracts in the second league again, again, I mean, if you, if you play two, three, five years in the DL, you always can come down and yeah. Yeah. You can making always go good down. Money there. You can always go up. And that's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. Man. But yeah. <laughs> but one thing I find interesting is what would have happened because I'm curious what it's like now to play at beating high, because for me personally, I think winning is fun and I think hockey is fun when you win and i looked at their roster a bit this year when they're in the dl and there's dudes that are like minus 30 so yeah. they must just be getting the wheels beat off from every game and it's like is that fun like maybe you make a little bit more money as a player but i bet you your life sucks day to day yeah i i, I have contact to the guys and for sure they're working their asses off and everything but yeah it's like you said it's not fun if you get beat all the time and it really beat so bad i mean like last year, the, the first year in the DL, we, we also had just, I don't know, 1.2 2 points uh, per game. But still, we, we won big, big um, games and we won the right ones. And then we, at the end, we finished at, at uh, 13th place. So uh, 15 teams are there. Um, so this is... This is uh, that's a it win. was great that, that we yeah. didn't that for us it was a win because everybody expected us to going down again right away and, but it's totally different and, expectations right and it's like i yeah. remember when i was there and i first get to germany 
and Straubing and Lansud had been the big rivals. And then Straubing had just gone to the DL and it's like, well, they, like they're better now, and I hear they're doing great. Yeah, but they, like, they're really good, doing good now. Yeah, but like for years they were the bottom of the DL, and it's like, is that yeah. really that much fun? <laughs> yeah, I I can I can imagine. Like even with the now now it's the rule that you can go up and down, and I really really love it because that's how it should be. On the same hand, that is definitely be, how it should be. Yeah, you know, when, I, when they closed it on us, when they closed the DL to the second league, that was when all the contracts went down. For us yeah. imports, we were making more money. They closed it from the second league to the first league and vice versa. And that was when teams were like, well, why are we going to pay this much if we can't even go to the DL? Right? Yeah, on the same hand in the second league, but on the same hand also in, in the DL. I mean, I mean yeah, you, you may be fighting a little bit for the playoffs, but there were some teams that were in December, they knew, or in January at least, they knew it's the season's over. They even sell players again then in the in February to other teams because they can save some money. And it's for the fans, it's bullshit. For for the team, I think it's bullshit just to lose and just to to sit down at the bottom of the of the standings. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I can you, imagine you gotta that. make it competitive and like yes, you gotta yeah. fight fight for your spot. And yeah. Like when you think the second league team, if you win it and you earn your way up to the DL, that's great for all of those players. And I felt like we did that at Beaghead that first year. I we, felt we, like we would we, earn we it had, for sure. Yeah. When we were in those Poe Cal games playing the DL teams at the start of the year, we were winning games against like yeah, yeah. all the DL teams, right? And in the end, you you had like five five imports less than, yeah. than the DL yeah. teams. I it mean, was for cool. sure, they never played hundred percent, maybe, but. Yeah, well, we're I, out there playing hockey against Dusseldorf with Hugh, yeah, and I knew what yeah. some of those players were making. And I'm like, yeah. we're competing with this team, and they're making triple the amount of money as us. <laughs> but it was the, it was the same last year for me. I mean, we were out there, and we we were just making uh, in the end that money what we made in the DL too, maybe a little and bit then, more. But then but, you're playing but Berlin, then you played you're playing Berlin, Munich, Mannheim, and, yeah. And then, and it's yeah. pretty cool to see those guys to play because there are some guys who earn the money for sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> because yeah. they can handle the puck and can skate and everything. But in the end, it's also nice to see when you can compete with those guys. Just to you can you can skate with them, 100%. you can battle with them hard, and maybe it's not the, the nicest and most. Uh, uh, yeah, to see you know, the nicest. Uh, hockey, sometimes you lose the puck and it pisses you off, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, but. Uh, I yeah no I always liked playing the DL teams when we were in the second league yes, because it was, was fun cool. for us to try and beat them right and I remember when we did it a couple times I'm pretty sure we played played Frankfurt like at home and beat them and I remember yeah. Derek Hahn was on that team and he's from Elmira and like I knew what their team was and they had the like former NHLers and all these players and then we brought them into our little barn in Beatingheim and beat them it was so cool <laughs> yeah that, that's I miss and we never had the Pokal after the of 2013 I think yes so but I all you guys always, don't do that anymore no no many years even with a DL many years ago or not but like you said it was always not maybe not for the DL teams for sure, but for for the second league or maybe for the third league teams, it was always fun to play against the higher league, and yeah, you had we were always really so excited. You had everything to everything. win and nothing so, to lose. <laughs> yes, that's that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Be it, I man, I wish I was coming back for your game. Oh yeah. Are all the same restaurants still around that town? Because I loved the restaurants at Beatingheim. I really ran a muck in the food world there. I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are for sure a couple of good ones. Still. Like Rossneck yeah. still around? Rossknecht is still around. That place yes, ain't yeah. going anywhere. That place was my honey hole, yeah. Yeah, you just walk down there and yeah, that's good for you. Yeah. Or maybe not as, as good for get you. The fauna, sure, but... <laughs> get the fauna, get the fauna and a couple beers. In the... <laughs> um, yeah. And then there was De Sergio's on the edge of town. That was our Italian place that had a tortellini rosé that was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it's a different, different, same same place, but different owner. But yeah, yeah, yeah. What but about yeah. what about uh, the place with the good tomato soup? What was that called? Uh, on the uh, Colombo? No, Columbo. a long time ago. Really? No, no, not anymore. What a soup. No. I've never had tomato soup like that. <laughs> How do you make tomato <laughs> soup that good? I don't get it. You, but all you guys see uh, all, just over all over the tomato soup. Oh, it's the best. I, oh, it's, it's it was so the good. best. It, it was crazy how good they could make tomato soup. Like, I've yeah. never even had tomato soup even close to as good as that yeah, anywhere. Yeah. You should you should ask for the receipt someday. Uh, my ma- sure. my <laughs> mouth is watering talking about the food in Beatingheim, Germany. How about Luigi's? Is that still around? Uh, no, no, no. Oh my god, that place, folks! You get you could get a parmesan, right? Spaghetti, and then they would put it in the big wheel of parmesan, 
and throw your noodles around in the wheel of Parmesan. But then, like, yeah, you go there for lunch after you ran 500, 400 meters and the boys all go for lunch <laughs> together in between our runs. <laughs> and that, Luigi is what a place though. You'd have one of the best meals you could get for like 10 euros, right? Yeah, that was awesome. Our deals also there. Yeah, like you said, for lunchtime, uh, it was good. Yeah. It'd yeah. be interesting to go back to Biedigheim and everything would be different, right? I think everything's going to be it, the it same. It changed for sure. But in the end, I think you would. You would Did uh, I hear CeeLo has a restaurant in town? Yes, he has a restaurant. He had, the, the cool thing was he had a restaurant downtown also, right right across from um, yeah, that, Luigi. Uh, yeah, yeah. By the fountain. Luigi was by the by fountain. A... Yeah, right, right at the fountain. Yeah. Um, so he had it for five years there and, uh, yeah, it was awesome because this was always our spot to go after the games, maybe even for lunchtime. So we went there and for he five years, he had it. How long has he been out of the game? He, oh, yeah. His, uh, his wife started it, uh, while he was playing. Uh, yeah. He's, he's still playing there a little bit, but, um, now they got it at a, at a tennis court, but it's still, still pretty cool. And, uh, maybe that's, that's, uh, yeah. Where oh, we went, wanted to go with all the guys, and yes, Seal is a beauty. You know, I reached out to him, and he never, I don't, he didn't write back. I but Seal is, is messaging. Sometimes I write him too, and he's just, I'm not sure. But you have to call yeah. him. I think you have to call him. Call him because yeah. he's a yeah. beauty. He was one of my favorite goal. I. He's a great goalie. He great. He guy. was a great he's goalie. Awesome. Great person. Great teammate. I. I. It's funny when you get talking around. The memories of flood back because I remember when we had a team cabina fest or whatever, and we ended up back at CeeLo's apartment there on the corner, <laughs> yeah, uh, by where all the dog shit is in Beatingheim. You know that one, <laughs> that one field so, that's so just you, all so you dog mean, shit. You mean where Beckham always shit? Or what? <laughs> Beckham wouldn't even go in there. Beckham was too high class for that place. Okay, he ain't okay. taking dumps there. That's where every other dog goes. He would look at it and be like, "You're not making me go in there." <laughs> Nobody would pick up the dog crap. It was full of dog crap. But that I was think, right beside CeeLo's place. And, yes, yes, but yeah. we went there, and I remember him pulled out, like, moonshine late night. And he was like, whatever it was, like, Croatian moonshine. And, man, we had so much fun. And then we went to a practice the next day, and it was the first time in my life I ever played baseball and hockey practice. Remember that? That was a fun yeah. day. Yeah, fun practice when we were all hungover. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Those are my favorite stupid. days when you build character yeah. together, right? After a Monday fun day and y'all show up and do a stupid workouts. <laughs> yes, that's the best. Everybody's just well, in it but together, you, but you do yeah, it together, it together. Yeah. And, and then you go home and have a nap after. <laughs> <laughs> you need it, that's for sure. <laughs> Some of those workouts, man, I tell you. <laughs> okay, we're going to be here a while, I think, but poster pictures, okay? The one I sent of the Pokal... When we won it, I didn't play because of my hernia surgery, but we win the Pokal and we were, this was from our first year when we win it, we dressed as knights. It was me, you, Schmitty. Remember we put on all the body armor? That was, yeah, yeah. That was cool. And I really liked the cool. picture too uh, that you sent it to me. I, I had one, one another, I think here too. And yeah, but I, you not forget Dress, about it. But, yeah, I forget. But, you forget about like the day you actually went there and they're like, here, put this stuff on and take pictures. And then you see the pictures now and you're like, God, that's cool. We did that. <laughs> yes, yes. And it, it was, I think it was even on the fan shop and the old ring. It was like, uh, well, I didn't want to, or three meters high and two yeah. meters wide. So I didn't want to bring that and... up. I didn't want to bring that up. <laughs> I didn't want to bring that up, Beatingheim, but you did put me on the side of your arena, like bigger than life size. Full size of Waldo, and then you asked me to kindly leave. <laughs> you know, that's uh, it's sad. It's sad. It's still, it's still. Uh... Don't worry, it doesn't even hurt that much, guys. Don't worry, you won the championship the next year, right? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, but it was cool, and you know what's weird is that I never took a picture of that. I don't have a picture that, like, yeah. You take I, it, I, when you're I... a hockey player, you take it for granted what's all going on, right? And you don't take mm -hmm. pictures of some stuff that happens. And I know you'd be the same way. Um, you wouldn't have all the stuff you'd just be living and you'd be working hard and playing hard, but like that we were on the arena, like bigger than life size and that I don't even have the photo of that. And then they move yeah. into their new fancy arena and forget all about me. And then I don't have that picture. That sucks. You know? That's really bad too. I, I never, but I mean, also in our time, you didn't have all the time to make a picture. You don't have a smartphone. So maybe no, it's a no. little bit changed, but like I said, there are some memories or some things that I would, 
love to have on, on my as a picture as yeah. a video or something like that so i thought my like, blue nokia phone was cool but it wasn't <laughs> taking many photos <laughs> even like yeah that's true even the, the the last championships you know at least you got some some videos and some pictures even more because everybody had it on the eyes and yeah the, in yeah. the first championship nobody had a phone on the ice we just maybe i'm not sure if you, we were just living man. just a we little just... bit you just in the end, you, you even appreciate it even more maybe in that moment because you just don't it's, have to think, oh, I have to call this and I have to I, make it, a picture I, there. Yeah. So you just I, cut I, your it, jeans off and get to work, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Just cut it off. Oh, I'll never forget though when we were downtown smashing beers and we had stayed up at the that place they had taken us. We went to Munich. We bus all the way back and we go to that big warehouse. There's a live band. It's like two, three in the morning. All thousands of fans are there to party and we party all night. And then you wake up at noon the next day and guys are like, let's go for beers. I'm like, yeah, just let me cut my jeans off first and then we'll go. And then you start having beers and then people start rolling into town. And I, we weren't even putting it together because we were just having so much fun and it was a beautiful sunny day. Yeah. And then all of a sudden Dirk shows up. He's like, what are you guys doing? There's a parade, like get to the <laughs> arena now. And then me, Beckham, and Hunter, Dougie's dog, hop in the trunk of the car, and all the other fellows climb into the little car, and we get us, because none of us could drive. We get to the <laughs> arena, and someone opened the back of the trunk, and me, Beckham, and Hunter roll out of the back of the trunk, and I got my cutoff jeans on, and I'm just totaled. <laughs> and I remember that the news, the video, the news camera, like the news of wherever, was filming me getting out of the trunk. <laughs> God, I wish I had that stuff documented. What a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was a really cool party downtown then at the end also. It was a really Wasn't nice it? my best my best my best party uh, for yeah. sure after the championship. Well, yeah. the first time, right? That was the first time beating Heim won and they had tried for years. And when we yes. did her, what a party. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Only got Never a little forget. bit away from me. <laughs> <laughs> um okay and then another poster picture which is really cool is you hugging your brother after it looks like he scored a goal that you got to play pro hockey with your little brother and then you see him do as well as he was doing um it must have been cool to see your little brother doing so well and you're playing with him right yeah that was a special time for me too and uh Honestly, before I, I didn't know that I have this picture because I looked up for pictures you asked me. So I, I'm really happy that I have this picture. But like I said, it's special time. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm spending this time with my brother, with your family, right in the dressing room. That's all really, day, really yeah. cool. And all yeah. day. And I saw him every day. That's that's kind of special. Yeah. Well, he was a gamer too. He would practice yeah. hard and play hard. He he, yeah. he was he competitive. Loves to, he loves to, oh, to hit yeah. some guys. And he's... He, he's even I would say he was totally more talented than me because, uh, but he's, yeah. Well, you guys were different. You guys were different, different, different kind of players. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Another poster pick that actually this made memories flood back to me was you sent the picture of the river going through beating of you guys paddle boarding. <laughs> and what was cool for me, it went right by that bridge there. Right. And what was neat for me was that's was where me and Beckham would go. And yeah, I would throw the stick in the river and he would go out and swim all day. And um, it brought back a lot of memories of doing that with him. When I saw you guys paddle boarding down the river, you know? Yeah. I just, and I just noticed the viaduct, so the, the bridge there. And I just thought this is something, what, what is uh, a yeah, cool picture. Nice about, I was about Bidikheim and that's yeah. like, I, said, they, I walk sometimes there with my dog also. And yeah, it's, it's a nice area there too. Yeah. I spent a lot of time and... walking down that path. Yeah. <laughs> 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 sometimes i'd even take beers on the walks you know <laughs> yeah, you have to take it's weird you... though when you become a hockey player I, this is a memory that came back to me because i found out a kid in cardiff wears number 18 because of me and like i don't know what happened in beatingheim because like i got asked to kindly leave and i never went back and you know whatever um i remember a day sitting there throwing a stick in the river with beckham and i'm just sitting there drink i think i was, might have been having a beer just relaxing <laughs> And, uh, but there was a kid like came by and we got chatting and he was like, there's, you're not Brett, you're, you're Brett Walton. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, why? <laughs> he's like, like, actually, and the kid like, couldn't even believe he had met me. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. like, what? I'm just it's, a normal dude. 
yeah yeah you, yeah that's the same you, you think you're normal but for them sometimes it's special and they well, and then, and then when you become you and, a parent right and you see yeah. what it can do for your kids and you can yeah. see how just something so little can make a kid's day it's like yeah. i wish i would have been better i wish i would have done more beating time i wish i would have gone out for the minor hockey more and helped the kids and been more a part of it right and instead of sitting at home watching netflix i wish i would have been more involved in the community yeah yeah too but yeah after after that you're always smarter and yeah but like you said it's nothing for you what 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 you do and it's so much for for the kids and all the fans it, maybe it doesn't end, take much at really all cool. right no totally yeah so i'm really excited also to to see all those fans again on my game i hope they're coming a lot fans and just to because that was always nice after the season the season end party you had that first time really time with them you can talk with them you well, don't that, just separate yeah. it from them and yeah it's weird for me because i honestly i it was in germany there were a lot of fans that like kind of couldn't talk english right and you wanted yeah. to yeah. talk and they wanted to say stuff to you and you want to say stuff to them but you could i couldn't really figure it out and then when i got to go to cardiff and like actually be able to talk to people again and like it is a big part of hockey is talking with your fans and getting to know yeah. them right yeah. Yeah, it's a lot totally. easier when I can speak English, but like I did, I, it took me a long time to learn German, you know, and that by the end I was pretty good at it. Right. Dude, you were not bad. That's true. Yeah. Uh, and you yeah. still can do it. Eh? Ah, I can speak and I'm best in Deutsch. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> sehr good. Sehr good. Yeah. Um, ein halbe Bier, bitte. <laughs> ein helles Bier. That's, that's, I think that's the first sentence what everybody learns when he comes. Yeah. To yeah you got to say that. And then after that, all you got to say is, Knock mal, bitte. Ein Mayor, bitte. Exactly. <laughs> I've played the Ein Mayor game a few times. <laughs> That's the one more game, folks. I played one in Canada game. too. <laughs> uh, okay, next poster pick is your dog. I imagine it's your dog drinking out of the trophy. Yes. That's a cool yeah. picture, eh? Yeah, I love this picture too. I, What's he drinking? My, water out of there, or is he like uh, no, he it's, smashing it's, pints? It's back, back in would smash pine. <laughs> no, that's just water. <laughs> oh, okay, you treat your dog better. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> we, oh, we drink man. all the beer before out of it, so that's. I remember when we would have all the fellas over after a game. <laughs> Guy be keep pouring beer for Becca. At least it's like. <laughs> He's how much beer did he have tonight? I'm like, oh, I don't know. He was I guy I saw Guy give him a couple sips, but then the dog would be sitting there drooling over the beer. <laughs> but he was always there at the always guys there. who, who spoke for you. Yeah. yeah. Come to the bars with us, come to the restaurants. <laughs> Becca was part of the team. Yeah, totally. Um, so the other poster pick that I sent was it's Silorama, Big Sexy, Hammer, Dougie. I don't know where we are, and it's me and you. I think we might be at the Stuttgart Festival. I think in Stuttgart, yeah, maybe at the Varanga. I don't know. What's it? The Var- Stutt- That's a fun one too. That's at the start of the season too, right? Where it's still nice weather, and you go to Stuttgart and run amok. Yes, <laughs> yes, that was cool too. Yeah, you had the party there, and you went there. But I, I, I'm maybe it's not that big. I'm not sure, but we don't get into because the bouncer said this one guy won't be able to go into the club. I'm not remember who was this guy. I think mm. it was maybe. Some, mm, I remember that. I remember yeah. being overserved. <laughs> I remember being overserved. Yeah. I do remember that. I kind of ruined uh, the team party because we had a place set up and a whole reservation. And then they told me I couldn't get in. So then the whole team was like, well, if Waldo can't get in, we're not going. And then everybody was like, is this guy serious? He's too drunk. We can't get in. And now our whole team can't go. And then I don't even know what we ended up doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but this was cool. Yeah, this was awesome. Hey, sometimes growing up's hard, right? Yeah. <laughs> you got to yeah. learn your lessons, right? <laughs> I'm way more mature now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fun times. Isn't it fun talking about this stuff years yes. later? Yeah. God, this oh, is oh, fun. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Another poster pick that was cool was your thousand games jersey. So they gave you a jersey that says thousand on it. And is that a gold stick? It's a golden stick. Yeah. The trainer organized it. It's really awesome. There's a thousand on it too. And like I, I was really, uh, I could even play with the jersey. I mean, before the game, the, the, G, the, the GM came to me and just told me, hey, if you want, you could play with a jersey with a thousand. And first of all, I would I said like play the oh, hockey game with that. The whole, the whole hockey game, yeah, I played with it. So it was you did, yeah, I did in the end because 
he asked me, you could do it. We asked for it, the league, it's already set up. And I, my first thought was no, because I don't want it. And that's what my five. And yeah, so, but, but then I, I, then I, I know think who, about I know, it. the thing is, is I know who you are. And I know what type of guy you are is you wouldn't want all that attention. You just want to be one of the yeah. guys and go out and play your game. Yes, but then it's but, like, but, in, but for yeah. the memory and how important a thousand games is, yeah, you were yeah. like, I kind of have to, eh, if I can. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so then I, it's a game worn Jersey and it's a memory. Doing yeah, things for the memory is fun. That's that's <laughs> awesome, yeah, and and it's, it's special. So I think I never saw it before. So yeah, that was pretty cool in the end. That is cool. It's you know what I thought was really stupid that I can bring up if any German people listen. I thought wearing a gold helmet was really stupid. When I was the leading <laughs> scorer and I'd wear a gold helmet, I thought it was really stupid. Um, so if you're still doing that, Germany, stop it. It's stupid. Okay, but you but you have your golden helmet for sure in the in the, in the I have one from Denmark. Oh, from Denmark. See, I wouldn't keep the helmet because they made me wear it. I hated that thing. <laughs> um, I got one from Denmark for winning the championship, and the whole okay, team got cool. one. That's what that's I thought cool. was cool. That's I just like cool. being yeah. part of the team and being one of the guys. I don't need a gold helmet. I don't want everybody to know where I am I, out there. I I can't tell how it is to to have a golden helmet because I never had it. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but I thought it was just. Do they still do that? Uh, no, no, uh, yeah, they did it, uh, they do, but not not anymore. In the yeah, I'm not sure in the second league, honestly, but yeah, we yeah, did it a long you're time. A, you're we did a it DL long guy years, now. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, yeah, yeah, no, but but uh, yeah, I don't never liked it either that much, but um, yeah, I, I just yeah. found it interesting that year when we sucked, right? We would, I remember we'd play, I think it was Garmish that had that Debel, uh, Debelka, Debelka, yeah. and yeah. that guy was awesome, he was a great player. I'm sure I think he's still playing, but that guy would be standing wide open in front of our net. And I'm like, is our team serious? The guy with the gold helmet is wide <laughs> open in front of the net. Are we actually that bad that we don't even notice the guy with the gold helmet standing in front of our net wide open? It yeah. was crazy. Yeah. We didn't we didn't play that much more Cardenaccio, I think. <laughs> Some of the hockey I played at Beatingheim was some of the weirdest <laughs> hockey I've ever played in my life. Uh, yeah. So that that is one of my stories. I, when you bring up Cadenacho, I just get a little wound, right? Because I am quite competitive. And one of my goals every year was to lead a league in scoring. And I never did lead the league in scoring. But the second league of Germany, that first year we win the championship, we go all the way to Bremerhaven for the last game of the season. I am tied for the league lead in scoring. We get to the game and the coach tells us we are not allowed to try and score. We are not allowed to cross the red line. <laughs> we have to dump it in and trap. And I'm like, coach, what if we get a two on one? Waldo, dump it in, stand at the red line. Catanacho. <laughs> and I remember we played like two games and it's like zero or two periods. And it's like zero, zero. I'm like, and we have our in between period meeting. And I'm like, I'm like shaking. I'm getting angry because I wanted to lead the league in scoring. And I thought that would be cool. And I remember saying in between periods, he's doing his meeting. I'm like, Hey coach, are we allowed to try and score now? <laughs> God, don't what did worry. did he say? I can't remember. I'm pretty sure he was like, well, if it's an odd man rush now, you could try. <laughs> <laughs> then it's okay. You then don't it's have to okay. Anymore. <laughs> yeah. But no, I did not lead the league. So, uh, you know, Catanacho. Catanacho. Mm. <laughs> and then the other one that I found interesting and that you guys did win the championship was the shotgun. And that oh, was yeah. the coach that didn't like me came in and he told me to trap and play that his one, three, one. And then when they, we forced them to dump it in, I'm not even supposed to back check anymore. And I'm supposed to stand at the far blue line. And I'm like, in my whole life of hockey, it's you stay on the defensive side of the puck and you don't cheat on the offense. And now my coach is telling me to cherry pick. Yeah, I, I, I totally understand. But uh, with this system, the year later and the years later, we were so successful. I know. <laughs> so I'm, yeah, it's, it's a different hockey for sure. And you just sometimes just whack it out there from the D's. They just have to whack it out. They just, they just <laughs> and, shoot it off and, the glass and out and you got your wingers stand at the far blue line. But sometimes you get a breakaway or even Dortmund rushes there and everything. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's it was just so but, weird yeah. for me, right? Like I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm my whole life, I'm told to stay defensive side yeah. and not defensive cheat on the side, offense. Yeah. And yeah. then all of a sudden he's like, "Hey, trap!" And then go to the far blue line when they dump it in. I'm like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, but the cool thing, the only cool thing is, if you got the one guy, the one guy up, up on the blue line, he's 
more just a decor. So, yeah. but the cool thing is, you maybe get some two or two defensive guys to stand with you. So at least we it, play it opens up four, the whole four, thing. Three, and it, yeah, and, <laughs> and it opens up. everything up, and then they got no gap, plays. and they're standing still. Yeah, yeah I get but it. But then, then they coming in all on you, and you're standing still at the blue line, and then get, they passing you, and you can't keep up with their speed. So you just yeah, you just uh, oh, the guy who has this job, but not more. <laughs> <laughs> I. <laughs> Yeah, some of the memories have come back. I still remember when he told us we were going to play the shotgun. And I'm like, what's this now? And then I remember the way he started it was, I've coached teams in the past that are under-talented and aren't as talented as the other teams, and this is how we're going to win. And I was like, so you're telling us we suck? Is that what you're saying? Are you saying I'm not talented, so I got a cherry pick? <laughs> Oh, what a guy! Um, better, better this way than Catanacho all the way. All oh, the time. so man, at least... was the most frustrating thing ever because we had the best team ever and we weren't yeah, allowed to score. Especially that's yeah, yeah. And you... <laughs> God, you imagine if like we could have just played and everybody would have been able to make plays. Like I remember the guys on the third and fourth line those years would not try to do anything, like nothing. The D man would no, rim I, it. I, you would chip yeah. it out. You would chip it in. And you would not try to do anything. And I thought it was wild because he would let me and Justin do kind of whatever we wanted. You, you but could do whatever could. you do. Yeah. You could, but in the end, I just chipped it. I never, I never get the puck and do something. I just because you want to get another shift. Yeah, because you want to get another shift. If you won't, if you won't it out, and the, the D just get the puck and just shoot it on your net, you sit for the next shifts. Oh, so yeah. yeah, that's what you did. But uh, I. That yeah, maybe hockey, that, this, this didn't make me a better hockey player for sure not, but uh, no, yeah, no, but, but you it, have to do what you do. So, but you um, have to listen to the rules or you don't play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, it, and we were successful too. So yeah. I found you it guys, interesting. I went and watched big sexy play for Dusseldorf a couple of years later and he was his coach and their team played the exact same way. They did the exact same stuff, but they, they weren't good. And they just got throttled and they would just trap and then rim it out and chip it out and chip it in. And nobody was trying to score. And I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's, it's also crazy. I think it's tough that you get a team to do all that. I mean, like you said, maybe the first line wasn't supposed to do everything like that, but in the end, but the we did kind of did it somehow. And that's yeah. why we were successful. I think because yeah. I, I when I remember I, some other teams, they, they even if you're talented, you then you say, why should I do that shit? I, I just yeah. do it my and way. There, and there's guys and then, that and don't then it buy falls in. Apart, yeah. And then yeah. yeah, and then nobody, everybody, did the it. other and, teammate, and everything. Yeah. So, so this was this was pretty good, and this just for the team that we. No, just like I, I, I have it written down here though, 2008 nine, and I got winning is fun, but like then I got some guys written down. It's like Doug Andrus is one of my favorite guys to play hockey with. He was a great person. Awesome, Greg yeah. Schmidt was one of the, he was like kind of like a mentor to me as a young pro. He was the old guy with, with the wife and kids in Germany that has been through it all. He knew how to speak German. He could help with everything. And like his kids were going to school in Germany. And I thought it was so cool. And like, what a great leader and a guy to learn from. But then you got big sexy. Um, He was one of the best players I ever played with. Yeah, when people absolutely. asked me who was the best player I played with it, Usually I say Justin Kelly because um, yeah. it was the best year of hockey I ever had was him as my centerman. But like he's year passing of, everything, oh, that's... he yeah right. He could do it all. He could score. He could yeah. pass. Yeah. And like yeah. the 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 patience he had to like make that pass that nobody else would make. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just but, get out the, the the tempo, the 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 speed, and just wait a little bit and wait, and then he did yeah. the pass. And then, um, yeah. and then there's Casper, the Danish dynamite. Oh, like what a dynamite. great, He's, what a great, yeah. what a great dude he was. And yeah. I, I saw him in Denmark. Eight eh, years later, we played oh, in the playoffs cool. against each yeah. other. Yeah. yeah, we put him out. Ha <laughs> <laughs> That's how yeah, I got I've a gold seen, helmet, I, I folks. Think, I seen Casper like I don't know three, four years ago. He's just we're just sitting in downtown Biedigheim, and he's just walking by there. And and Cora said, "Hey, this is this in Biedigheim. He was in Biedigheim. Yeah, he was with his family there. So we." This was just they. I think they went to to I don't know France to to holiday or somewhere, and they just did a Wanted one stop by. over one night in Bidikheim with the. He just happened to and, see him. Yeah, totally. It was so cool, and we had spent the the, the, the the evening together. We had also a small kid, so it was not that long, but it was so so cool to see the, him again. And well, do you know what yeah. was cool for me? And you you think about the world not being so big, is 
my parents come over to Denmark and then we hear about this big water park. Um, so we go there and this is when we have, I think just Colby at this point, right? Yeah. Just Colby. And, um, we go to this water park and I, I run into Casper and Trina and his <laughs> brother who I'd met at beating high. And we got gone to like the Stuttgart beer tents where like we got to know each other and I run into Casper and his brother and their families at a water park in Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool yeah it's, uh, sometimes the world is really really small too but yeah that's uh, Cas- so anyways yeah uh, casper's dandy. Uh, it was a great great team all yeah. the imports well, what you said i mean there's well the, those so are the imports cool but then you got the landsuit crew and like i had played with them in landsuit hammer guypey and myself all switched teams together and they're two of my favorite teammates i thought they were two of the coolest dudes the best teammates that would do anything for everybody. They didn't yeah. whine about ice time or points or anything. They were just there to have fun and play hockey and win. And that's Hammer and Guy, who were two of my favorite teammates, and they were there. Um, and then you got Florian Young. He was a damn yeah. too, right? Yes, yes. And that guy's h- hardly playing on our team, and he was a fantastic <laughs> player. He was so good. Yeah, like you said, he's third or maybe sometimes even fourth line. I don't know if he switched or was around. But yeah, and yeah, he was. Oh. Yeah, why? And like, cool these guy. are these are our guys that are hardly playing. And then you got Dirk <laughs> Robel, right? Like, Dicky. Yeah. So the this is another way we know each other, though. Is the way I ended up in Beatingheim for the folks that don't know is I played for Landsuit the year before, and we played Beatingheim in the playoffs. And after we put you guys out, I got an offer the next day. But I remember in that playoff series, I got matched up against Dirk a lot as he was a D man. And I remember like dumping it into his corner and how good he could skate. He would just turn around and get the puck and skate away from me. And I was like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> and like, he, like, I thought Dirk was a fantastic defenseman. And then that next yes. year he was like he a, a your top pair. And then the next year he's like playing healthy scratch forward. <laughs> and I'm like, this no. was your best defenseman a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that, that was crazy. It crazy. was a crazy lineup we had, wasn't it? Yes, yes. <laughs> so anyways, and all he just had written down was great people, and I think that's what yeah. wins championships, right? Totally, yeah. I, always when I when I look back to my championships, we always had the same good chemistry in the team, and mm-hmm. it just works out. And yeah, it, it helps also, like I said, winning, and then you come more together, you put more effort in together. Um, and on the same hand, if it doesn't, goes that good everybody's looking it can a little go bit, the other way right yeah yeah looking just for yourself just maybe to get yeah. a contract maybe do that and well and then yeah, when you then start losing not right nice. and it's, like, it, it's yes. not nice it's not good for anybody yeah. but then when you yeah. start losing it's like well people want winners they want people that win and then when you start losing yeah. they're like well why is this team losing like what's he like and what's he like and then yeah sucks anyhow yeah. you know what else i got written down is um I want to talk about our <laughs> that season though, right? We have that team and we're really good and we won it all folks. And I don't try to bash the coaching that much because realistically, Christian Brittig was the first coach that truly believed in me in land suit. I didn't think they used me enough. I didn't think I played enough or as, as I, I could have done more. And I remember that year telling people I could play, I could be one of the best players in this league if I got used more. And then Christian Brittig did that and he put me with Justin and he put me on the first line, everything. And I'm not trying to bash him. So I do appreciate everything you did for me other than the way you treated my knee and my injury. Don't like that. <laughs> okay. But do you remember we would play a Friday game wherever it may be home or away. We would come to Saturday practice and we would have no pucks and we would skate hard down the middle, <laughs> slow on the outside, hard down the middle, slow on the outside. We wouldn't bring out the pucks, and that was all we would do for like 30 fucking minutes. Sorry, Sorry for swearing, folks. It was crazy. We, we also had one practice. I think it's a Saturday practice, too. We had no pucks. We had just tennis balls because we didn't block enough shots. shots. So and we started so firing tennis balls. Shoot shoot tennis balls, and then you try to block the shot and go back and forth. And, <laughs> and it was awesome. Do you remember <laughs> when somebody uh, covered their mouth, their wear divisor, and they went out to block a shot and covered their mouth, and oh, he yeah. saw that? <laughs> he just... <laughs> Oh, memories. Good stuff, eh? Yeah. Totally. Um, uh, well, I guess um, we also were there through when he got fired, right? So me and you yeah. stuck through the tough times there. 
And um, when he got fi- fired, like, it's like winning is contagious and losing is contagious. When we started losing and everything was going wrong, his coaching tactics were wild, right? Because remember, he used to say, yeah. I used to be able to make plays and do stuff. At the end of his time in beating Heim, he was saying every time you cross the red line, you should take a slap shot on the net because it's <laughs> always a threat. <laughs> yeah, maybe he tried. We some, had a three on two and, stuff and everything. Yeah, but... We had a three on two, I remember, and I crossed the red line and I tried to make a play. And he, I came to the bench. He goes, Waldo, what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, you're over the red line. That's always a threat. Take a slap shot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anywho. Okay, but I do really appreciate that you believe to be it played me a lot, right? <laughs> so I'm not trying to be mean, but you know, shouldn't have came back from my knee injury as fast as I did, and then I lot missed the whole year. But what are you gonna do? Right? How'd you like the new barn compared to the old barn? Oh, uh, it's yeah, it's a really, really nice barn. I really like it. It's uh, the dressing room is awesome. But on the same hand, it's not the same feeling than in no. the in the old one because if you play there again or in the playoffs, if you play there or uh, against, against Hellbron, Heilbronn, yeah. yeah, that's just not a, like because it. it was it was so so packed that the, the, the fans were right beside uh, behind you and or the standing fans, so you they were shouting, there was loud, yeah. there was always something going on. So um, yeah, we can really be happy that we have the new one for sure, and it's. Really cool, but yeah, the atmosphere you can't build anymore no. like that. I think, and it's you know, much. I we weren't like Olympic ice in the old arena, the new one is the bigger ice, and I'm not that type of guy. <laughs> I'm a small ice type of guy, I'd rather get in the corners and muck it up <laughs> than have to like beat a guy out of the corner, and then all of a sudden he like catches up to me, and I've got to beat him again, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but like I, I loved that old arena. I thought it was so yeah. cool to play in that arena, yes. and uh, yeah, I, it's weird, right? Because I see stuff that beating high posts now, and it just if it, it looks, it's a different place, right? It, I only you played. Can't one, remember anymore, right? Yeah, I only yeah. played in the so new arena one game, and I was playing for yeah, Hellbron. It's, <laughs> yes, it's it's ten years now. The arena's now ten years, I think. Yeah, so uh, that's crazy. I still remember that first game back in Beatingheim, right? And it's like I want it to go well so bad, and I want to beat you guys so bad because of letting me go. And then, um, I think you guys won, and then it's like. <laughs> And then you leave and you're just like, God, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hate that new arena. <laughs> <laughs> no, no good memories there. <laughs> no, not one. <laughs> I, but I would have one if I got to come back to your gosh darn game, right? That's true. Yeah. Um. Anyways, what else do I got? Um. So, yeah, I got one 2012-13 and I just wrote down Rodman's and McKnight. But then yeah. I see, so that's who they replaced me with, folks. They're pretty good. So I can't feel that bad, right? Way to go, good debt, good picks. Anyways, that playoffs, though, you win it. Did you know you had 14 points in 18 playoff games? That was, that was my best playoffs for sure. They were really, really Who are you playing awesome. with? You were running a mark, uh, right? I played, I played a couple times with Sommerfeld and, and Justi, Robin Just. Oh yeah, but, uh, he scored we had, a we lot of goals there. Eh? Too, like the Rodmans were were injured during. I think we had a we had a we had a hell of a battle against Rosenheim in the half final, over game seven, and it was awesome, awesome series. And awesome that would have been with that Greg Squires, eh? Yes, I think. Yeah, he was there. Yes, yeah, yeah, he was there. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember there was he, a coach he, there, and yeah. and the coaches there loved each other also. So there was always even in this games. I think in this year we played. We played uh, seven times, five times. So we played even Pokal. We played against Rosenheim. So we played 12 times against Rosenheim in this year. And there was always a battle. Always a battle. And yeah, it was just was um, I like the Rosenheim Arena. That was one of my oh, favorite was, parts. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Told, yeah. Yeah. A lot of character, right? Yes. That, those are the, the arenas fans I are like. cool there. And it's so, always nice when the, 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 yeah. the, 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 or the home fans from the, from the opponent team, when they are really loud, when they're really like yelling at you. I always laughed also when we went out in Schwenningen, for example, and they're always yelling at it, at you. It's always make you more pumped and make oh, yeah. you more ready. It's the best feeling. The, the atmospheres in the German arenas, um, they're like, I, man, 
you don't feel more alive than when you're out there and the fans are just going absolutely crazy and you're getting ready for like a big derby game. German fans are as wild as it gets, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you've only played in Germany. You don't even know. <laughs> yeah, I, I can I can compare, but but I'm totally happy. Yeah, it's it's cool. Uh, and that's like for me, it's kind of neat that like I did leave Beatingheim and get to go other places and see what Danish hockey was like, and then see what UK hockey was like, and actually get to know it all because every country does have a different culture. The hockey's different. The way they play it's different. The way they ref it different. Do you yeah. know the worst refs I ever had were in Germany? <laughs> um, I can't say. Anything, but Don't say anything. I you can, still I live can. there. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> German refs are yeah. terrible. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot, lot of, lot of discussions uh, during that time for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but, I, but, but honestly, um, yeah, for me, I always stand in this one, one team with this one team, and it's a pleasure and it's an honor and it's awesome. But on the same hand, like you said, I never noticed different are even yeah. arenas, even in yeah. Germany, different cities, and that's also something. Maybe not that not that I miss it, but it's it's really nice to have it. I think for you and all those, uh, it is different neat, guy. I think what's best for hockey, what the I think the best people in hockey, the best teammates, the best. But you're you are one of them, and that's why you're having a jersey retired and why you played twenty years though. Is that the people that are the best teammates, the best people stay on a team the longest. And the best thing for a hockey player in pro hockey is to find a home. I thought yeah. I had found that in beating Heim for my four yeah. years. And then when I started moving around and you're not that staple on the team, I go to Helbron for one year. I go to Denmark for one year. I go to Cardiff and then I had found like a home again, but then my knee went and it's like to feel appreciated, to feel like a place wants you. Like there's nothing better as a hockey player, right? Especially if you just have those one year contracts. And I see it a lot of times too, that, that the people, like you said, uh, they, they make their home here in Bidikheim. And then it's even harder to go away from, from here, just from the teammates, from all the organization, everything. So, well, yeah. And yeah. like, it does happen though, right? It's like, when I look at who you won with, I was thinking there was more guys that like I had played with, but like when it's only a few years later and there's only like four yeah. or five of the same guys, it's like, geez, I didn't realize there's that much turnover. And, and, and e yeah, even, even yeah, in this time, there was a lot of turnover since you left, but then we had a, pretty stable i would say and then but yeah like you said there were some years uh, i i was one of five guys who stayed in the in the team and the rest was just new so and that's yeah, what that's, losing that's does crazy. though right but then yeah what yeah. i found weird to me and whatever i he's not coming on i ain't talking to him but like you guys would win the championship and then you'd switch all the imports and it's like what kind of loyalty is this? What kind of hockey is this that like you show up, you sign a contract to do a job, you go out there and do the job and then he doesn't want you back. It's like, what? Yeah, that was, that was crazy. There were a lot of guys. Also even like, uh, Ralf, uh, Herbst, uh, Herbst. Martin Neumann, we won the championship and yeah, they, they had to look for different, different, uh, options. And after that, yeah. Yeah. It's that's uh, not that nice. That's not how hockey should be in my opinion. Um, I liked like in Cardiff, if you're a good player, good teammate, they wanted you back and they wanted to have a core. They wanted to have a team that went through it together. And I think that's what hockey is. And I think that's what we had beforehand in beating Heim was that we were trying to keep the good pieces, but then the budget changed. And, um, you know, I just, I yeah. find, find it interesting that like, I know it's weird because I know Dougie and PJ were back on that second year of their yeah, deal yeah. and he told them he didn't want them. They know he doesn't want them. And then they go out and win a championship for the guy. And it's like, geez, that's a weird situation. <laughs> and even PJ came back in this one year again to be the game for the playoffs. What? Yeah. He played. Oh fuck. What, what is this? Uh, he came back just for the playoffs. Yeah, maybe the last games in the playoffs. Was uh, this after he retired? He came out of retirement oh, to help yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was much later. I think maybe 2016 or something, maybe 17. Maybe I have to look it up. He's a, he's a, he's, he make, he gets me. I, I just heard from PJ. So he's scared of the shed. He won't come. Uh, Why? Because, yeah, he thinks his job's too serious, right? He's like an NHL, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's and, true. You know, it's like, I'm not going to ask you about that. I'm going to ask about your career and, you know. 
But anyways, <laughs> he's scared. But what's funny is he sends me stuff and uh, he was just at Western Michigan and sent me the video of like the pregame stuff at the school I went to. And he just writes for the shed. And I'm like, that's so cool that like my buddy is now an <laughs> NHL scout. And he's sending me videos of where I went to school. And it, it makes it feel like not a smoke, not a big world. Right. When you get that. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. That's uh, but he's a, he was a beauty too. It was a fun line. Totally. We had the three yeah, of us. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> yeah. I, I hope he's can come to my game too. Yeah. That's the plan. I hope he goes that's too. I wish plan. I was going. Yeah. Gosh, darn it. The more we talk about it, it's like, <laughs> I wish, I wish I didn't like have a job and I could just go do all this fun stuff that could happen around the yeah, world. Yeah. Just right? quit it. Nobody needs a normal job. Just quit it. Well, I do need the gal. Just, just, <laughs> just, just be the professional, uh, the podcaster. And yeah. The, well, the... I'm still, working at finding out how to make money so um <laughs> i'm actually just no, doing just this kidding. because i missed you and i want to talk to you i actually don't make money <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, awesome to, to yeah like you said we never talk that much to each other than than this for years now so this is right awesome. and, and like it's it. cool because we saw each other every day for years and we would battle and i know how hard it was on you when we were losing and it was the same for me because you're as competitive as me and um you know it's it's fun to reminisce on everything. Um, and like, I, it was, it was a blast being your teammate and like the Super Bowl parties we'd have at that place. Oh, if you remember those, those awesome. were good times. Yeah. I was just yeah. thinking cause Fenton's old man came the one year and he was like the assistant GM of Nashville at the time. And I remember ripping his shirt <laughs> off at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Fun Good. times. So you won 2012, 13, and then I see you win again, 2014, 15. And what's interesting for me is that's when I'm in Cardiff. And then, so you had David Wrigley, the guy that was playing for Munich when we beat them. Mm-hmm. It looks like he, he had 24 points in 14 playoff games. Eh? He's sick. He's an unbelievable player too. He's uh it's a lot awesome. of points in the playoffs. Holy <laughs> moly. Yeah. Did he not go to the Christmas markets and get too fat or what? <laughs> Maybe he just didn't need that much Schweinebraten, I think. <laughs> did Manfred did Manfred didn't sponsor him? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he was a good player. And, uh, yeah, his backhand saucers. I always loved his backhand. He's just coming into the zone, just a backhand sauce somewhere, and just right on tape for the other guy. Just put it in. Perfect. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, and then Big Sexy. So he had some injuries. Big Sexy Justin Kelly. Back again, yes. So he's back and it looks like he doesn't play that many games in the regular season, but when he does, he's still big, sexy, but then he comes out for the playoffs and then puts 18 points, in 14 games. <laughs> eh? That's unbelievable. Yeah. But he just, he just brings out that big, sexy again. And yeah, yeah. He's and just probably big, winning. sexy playing with Wrigley and their backhand <laughs> saucing it to each other. And it's like, Oh, <laughs> you guys totally forgot about little sexy. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that's a long time ago then. Eh? That's true. Uh, um, well, and then 2017-18, you guys win again. Whatever. Yes. Um, and Big Sexy's <laughs> on the team again, but it looks like he's hurt a lot again the regular season. This time he comes in out playoffs. in the playoffs, 23 <laughs> points in 16 yeah. games. <laughs> it was, I think he didn't have a good good year all year, but in the playoffs again, yeah. Well, he knows, what it, he knows what it's about. He's a winner, hey? That's totally true, yeah. I. It's neat that Beatingheim ended up has won as many times as you did, and then you guys also lost in the finals a couple of years too, eh? Yes, yeah, yeah. We mm-hmm. were lost uh, against Kassel in Frankfurt, and uh, that always sucks. But um, even like in the one year, Peter was there when we lost in Kassel, I think. But we in the end we had I think twelve players or eleven players, and yeah, you can't you can't compete there anymore. And if in the, a you're in the finals, you have 11 in the finals. Players. Yeah, there was like two and a half lines you played. And I think I, I um, there was the first years when I when I also played as a D because we just don't have any Ds anymore. I think in the last game, we had three Ds like for the last game. So because hurt and, and I don't know, suspended or we had the other guy was hurt in the game. And yeah, oh, that was what? bad. But yeah, then you yeah. lose those games. Yeah, you, yeah, you do. It does. You need everybody to win, and yes, like yeah. you need to have depth. And it's not about the. I found in Germany, I found it very interesting because the imports can get blamed for wins and losses, but yeah. I really deep down found that winning and losing came down to how good your Germans were. 
if you you had the best Germans in the league, you would win because the imports kind of cancel each other out. You can have ones that are better than other teams, but when it comes down to it, having you, Flo, Dirk, Hammer, Geipe, Schmatzi, Serikov, all these Germans that are awesome and make your team deep and you that's when you win. It's not about the imports. It's like when, when Beatingheim decided they didn't want me back and that's cool and all, but it's like, I was playing the exact same way. <laughs> and it's, it's even, like I said, I think that the imports are very, very important and you need the good imports for sure. Well, you but need like the good said, character ones that get along with the Germans and you need the Germans to get along with the yes, imports. That's yeah. what you need. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But if you get the deepness, then then you can even match the third, just German line against their top the line. And they just, just make it zero and then the imports can score for you the two, three goals and you win yeah. the game. So it's, yeah, you're right. it's so easy. Hockey is so easy. <laughs> but you, you have to have the Germans that can do that. You have to have the ones that can match up against those top yeah. lines. I yeah. still remember, going, like, we play teams and then, like, their fourth line, they'd come out all with cages on. And you're like, these <laughs> these, these kids aren't even 18. <laughs> and it's like, it's go time. <laughs> yeah, now, now you can go. That must have been your time. It's huh? time to get paid now. <laughs> I'm perfect. Um, but, man. So what were the parties like, all these other wins? You won again in 2020-21. Yeah, that party was shitty because we don't even have a party because it was COVID? corona. And it, yeah, oh, it was, gross. nothing was really? allowed. It was so Fun bad. Fun wasn't yet. allowed. God, I hated that time of life. Fun mm. was really not allowed, no. There was not, nobody in, in the in the rink, nothing. And, yeah, you won the, with the no cool fans? Thing, we won with no fans. And we were down zero, zero 0-2. In the series, it was best of five, and but we we do uh, after the fourth game, we went to Kassel again, and all the fans, if, even if they, it was not allowed even to to meet each other in Germany for more than two three people, but they were standing, I don't know, maybe maybe three hundred four hundred fans just standing there, and they doing the pyrotechnics, and you know all the fans shouting to us, and we with the bus we going through the fans, and this was mad. Special moment too. In it the would same be, time. and then you realize how much it's meaning to people that they're seeing you guys do that, even though you can't get to see them, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yeah. That it just was... brought back memories of like when we would play Helbron when I was a Steeler, and we would yeah. win a game in Helbron, and then you'd get back to the arena, yeah, and there would be the pyrotechnics, like the flames and the the stuff going off, and the fans chanting and dancing and singing, and you get off the bus and. It was it was fun, right? It was cool because you could could even lose five games in a row before, but if you win then in, in Heilbronn, then that's everything all that matters. Are right yeah, that's, that's cool yeah. too. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the first year's party was the best day. Eh? Yeah, de- definitely because yeah, the, I've was, never been a part of anything like that. That was especially the the, the after because it was downtown. There were even people who were not so familiar with, uh, hockey. with hockey they just went by and see hey there's a party let's go and so everybody was there and usually it's more just just the fans who's coming yeah. to, the, to the ring for example after the season or something they're really cool too and it's always fun to celebrate a championship but you know what we missed oh. i've been i've been after that i've been two times <laughs> winning a championship in mallorca you know that place, Palma de Mallorca? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Palaman, uh, you know I, that? I know Mallorca. I went there, a uh, cruise went there with PJ Fenton. My, was that, it was the year, it was that year, that last year, 11, 12, my last oh, year. You, oh, you went there? Yeah. PJ, Steph, and Lisa and I went on a cruise before we had our first kid, and Mallorca was one of the stops. But I know that there were like year end guys were going on year end trips. And that's one thing I regret about my career is, well, I also had my Frau there with me, which changes things, but there was always a guy's trip at the end of the season and you'd have your team fund, right? Of all the fines and all the yeah, yeah. money on the board. And that would help go towards going to like Mallorca for a weekend. And you'd see some pictures and what guys were doing and you hear the stories. I wish, and if any hockey players in Germany are listening to this, you should go on a trip with the fellas before you go home because home will always be there 
I know you miss home after hockey season and you want to get back, but you should go on the team trip before you leave. <laughs> and honestly, I tell you, you would love it. Oh, this is, this would be know. your I, place. I That's would be in my element. I would I, I run could, a mock. <laughs> I couldn't imagine with you to, to be there, but it's really fun. So the pro- the team, it's, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I found it interesting when I got there to Mallorca, though, that all the signs were like in Spanish, but they're also in German. That's yeah, a German yeah. hotspot, eh? Yeah, the, 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 there's a one one part of Mallorca, and there are a lot of Germans anyway. But there's one party party area, and we've been there right downtown there, and uh, it was that was fun for two <laughs> two three nights, perfect to uh, to to end us end a season like that. <laughs> I know. I wish I would have done that stuff. I remember when I was in Landsuit, and we almost won it. We lost a game five of a best of five in the overtime, and all the fellows were talking about going on this trip. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I gotta get home. And it's like, geez, mm. if I would have gone and done stuff like that, it's like those are memories you don't get back, <laughs> right? That's yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. So, anyways, what else do I got? Um. What's your favorite restaurant in Beedingheim? It's uh, not in Beedingheim anymore, but in, in Basingheim, you should come there to Basingheim and to the Radstuble. That's the best restaurant. You would Rad like Stube? it. Yeah, it's right, right at the. This German right, food. Yeah, German food, really good German food. So, what's yeah. your favorite German meal? Yeah, for Zwiebelrostbraten for sure. Yeah, Zwiebelrostbraten. If I if I eat it here, slow down. What? Okay, Zwiebelrostbraten. So, oh onion, yeah, I know, I know on, what you're saying. Uh, yes, on, I know yeah, what you're yeah. saying. <laughs> yeah, and, I didn't and, but, hear the Zwiebel. That's onion. Zwiebel, folks. the Zwiebel. Onion. Roast um, rotten. That's Rostbrot, a roast yeah. and broughton is yeah. um is it pork? Yeah, just no no beef beef. beef. Yeah. 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 So this is really, really good if you come to this area. Is that the dried Istanbul, onions on it or the fried onions? The the, the fried ones. Fried yes, onions yeah. on yes, a steak, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And the sauce and spätzle, so pasta oh, with it. Spätzle. The good good special spätzle, Swabian noodles. Oh uh, dude, check out what I got now. Oh, you got something here? Oh, I, I like cooking now, eh? I traveled all over the world, and now I like cooking. You know what I got Good. here? Maybe that's why I don't like cooking that much. Oh, I, I got my spetsly yeah. maker. Perfect. I have a spetsly maker. Yeah, I can whip her up. You can do it, yeah? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, Perfect. I can cook awesome. now. Yeah, you know how much I loved food. I just didn't know how much to – I didn't know how to love it, right? <laughs> so I used to just eat too much of it. Now I learned that, like, if I really try hard and cook it really good, I don't have to eat as much. You know, <laughs> I can still love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. But like, on the same end, like you said, what uh, what uh, kind of food I like, if you go to Bavaria, I mean, if you eat there, Schweinebraten or, mm. or something like that. Schweinsalz, you know what's interesting uh, about Schweinebraten? Is realistically, I've never had one as good as Hammer could make it. Oh, like ha- ha- really Hammer good, made yeah. a fantastic mm. Schweinebraten. Yeah. And people wonder how I got fat. Every Mittwoch, folks, every Wednesday, Hammer's <laughs> making Schweinebraten. And, with the canoodles, the, those yeah. canoodles, man, like there's the potato canoodle, but then there's the one that's like stuffing or dressing, whatever uh, you yeah, out. Yeah, the, the you moment, start pouring yeah. gravy on that shit, things get away from you, right? Yeah, and even, even every, it's not every Tuesday, but for most of the Tuesdays after the practice, he brought the Weisswurst, the white sausage and all the pretzels and all that stuff in the dressing room. And that was pretty cool too. I, I like vice first too. But like Hammer is the type of guy that knew how to hockey he knew how to bring teams together him yeah. having schweine brought and inviting the fellas and like it, it was what brought teams together and i thought hammer was a very important part to winning the championship and bringing the germans the imports everybody together you know yeah he was the link <laughs> he was yeah and we had a lot of fun <laughs> he's a dad now too eh yes i heard it um he's yeah Maybe I can say it. You probably yeah, haven't. He's, he's coming. He, I will, uh, he's coming. I hey, think, we yes, just announced that, folks. And breaking yeah, news. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> breaking, breaking news, news folks. But, Hammer but time's I'm really, coming. Are you really serious? And I'm him. not coming. Yeah, Hammer, Renee, you. Big Sexy. This is horse manure. Gosh darn it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. I don't, I don't know what to say. I, I should be there. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can still fly over. I asked him to Schweinebraten here, and then you can just fly in and take the Schweinebraten, play the Schweinebraten, game, and then go back. Run a muck <laughs> on the ice, score a couple goals. 
um no i i think it's so neat that you're getting to do that and that your jersey's going to be in the rafters and that like um like that's really cool man i it, it makes it not that big of a world but robert Zaja, say yeah do you know who that is he sent me pictures of when we won in beatingheim um mm-hmm. he sent me like eight nine photos of the parade and pictures with his daughter i i had imagined but man it, it was so much fun living and playing in beatingheim and um it was interesting for me because playing in the east coast i didn't really like hockey that much it really wasn't that much fun the where we lived what we would do, how many games we'd play. All of it was not that much fun. And then I got to Germany and you get to land suit and hammer and guy on your team. And it's just so much fun to play hockey again. And I had like guys like abstrader on the team. And like, there were so many dandies that hockey was fun again. And then I went to beating and we're winning and winning the championship. And like, I loved the town. I loved my teammates. I loved every restaurant in town. I loved the fans. It was it was as fun as life got, you know? Yeah, it was a really good time. It was yeah. I can't believe you won so many times. Yeah, that's really I feel really appreciated. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. How many finals did you lose in? I would say three. Yes, three, yes. Cheaper, so you so, and you won five, so eight times. finals, yeah, five times, <laughs> eight <yes>. finals. <laughs> that's pretty cool. And like I said, dude. that was and, and also that's that was since since 2009, I was so so successful with the hockey, and we were successful as a team. And yeah. this, this makes it really, really, really great time, great memories. And yeah, well, I, I couldn't imagine how it is if you just play your whole year. And maybe you even never won a in a championship because yeah, there's so many dudes and it, like so, it's yeah, weird. there's so many guys that like literally never won anything, like nothing. And it's like, and then the guys that did win, it seemed to have done it more than once because they like learned what it was about. But I find it interesting that you were like the main guy that was in Beatingheim through it all, and Beatingheim is what it is, and they're in the DL now, is because of you and um, like. You are the type of guy that a team needs. I don't like saying nice things to people in the shed, so I'm only going to say this once, okay? So yeah, you're not in the shed, so that's okay. That's true. I have to be in the house today. <laughs> Daughter's playing sick. It's not true, folks. <laughs> She's lying. She should be at school. What a punk. Um, but, like, the the how competitive you were, how good of a teammate you were, how you tried harder than anybody at everything we did – um, I'm very surprised you were never the captain. Um, I think you should have been, and I think you were for a lot of years. Um, but like teams buy in when like there's guys that kind of lead the way with their work ethic and how it is and, um, holding everybody else accountable. Like, um, like that year, that was hard for both of us. Um, I wasn't the leader I needed to be, but like you were the leader. You were the guy that was like, this is unacceptable. And you would let everybody know. You'd let the Germans know. You'd let the imports know. And it's not surprising that the organization has turned it around and that you won as many times as you did because of who you are. Okay. I only said it once. I'm not saying it again, asshole. (laughs) You are will always. Lick me a mosh, you are schlock. I am not saying anything nice to you ever again. (laughs) No, thank you. I appreciate it. But it's true. And that's why you're getting your jersey retired. And I think getting your jersey retired is like, man, for the guys that got that done and that that's up there forever. And it's like nobody's ever wearing this jersey ever again because of who this guy was. That's as cool as hockey gets, you know. That's that's pretty cool, yeah. And even also when I when my my kid is playing now hockey, and I, when I go there and maybe see my jersey once in a while, and yeah, yeah, yeah. that's special. Well, it's like someone it's and someone sent me the uh, which is weird because I went to Almira and someone's like, look at that, uh, like my hometown, and they're like, look at that banner. I'm like, oh yeah, that's when we won. And I've never actually looked at yeah. the banners of like when we won. But then yeah. someone sent me the photo and it said Deutsche Meisters 2009. And it was the banner in the Beatingheim Arena. And I was like, God, that's cool that that's up there. And I was a part of that. And that I come out, I cut, I start talking to people about their careers and their lives and everything. And then you just start getting sent stuff that makes it, it makes the memories flood back, right? It's like seeing yeah, you. Yeah. I can't believe 
We spend four years together. We see each other every day. We battle. We have good days. We have bad days. But, like, man, you're a fantastic teammate, and I'd do anything for you. And then you just don't see each other again. <laughs> yeah, know? that's the, that's the problem with, with the hockey, too, that you just moved out and, yeah, out of the sight. And, yeah, and it's that's really pity also but yeah like you said you were always a great teammate too we had always so much fun in dressing rooms together we on the ice and uh yeah on and off the ice we always had fun. on and off <laughs> and i tried to stay skinny for the boys i just had a hard time <laughs> Germany's food so is we, pretty hey, incredible. The boys, the, the boys <laughs> loved you uh, how you are, so you never had to be skinny for us. <laughs> that's just the coach. And, and that's what's interesting <laughs> for me is that you're right, though. It's like I, my teammates were like, it's like how I could do this. But then like the coaches and managers didn't always think the same way. <laughs> yeah. But it's like coaching my under nine gals now. And like I put this up now, it's like a picture of the team and i said when you're my teammate or you're on my team you're my teammate for life and that's what hockey's about right yeah, yeah like all the guys you played with over your time it's like if they needed something and they asked you i know you would do whatever they needed yeah and that's sure. hockey that's a connection to all those guys yes yeah especially the ones you win with right it's like when we lost it's like yeah the relationships are different yeah yeah totally yeah that's that's how it is even then the team is maybe built a different way together than you maybe was with this guy for one two years on a team so yeah that's not yeah i will you know it would be nice to see him again once in a while but it's different when you win games when you win together when you just yeah, yeah. and that's what i find very interesting about the future of the beatingheim steelers is like is it really more fun to be in the dl or is then winning fun <laughs> next next year they won't be in the dl again oh so they, they got went, relegated they went out yes yes yeah. oh well so uh, winning that's more... that's bad uh, but at least i hope it's so bad too, but for it's the fun fans because next year they can win hockey, yeah you can see more wins yeah for sure well it can't be fun for the fans like pay their money and then they go out there and get smashed by berlin or something right <laughs> for like... sure not but but i have to say and that's that was also my last year when we didn't win that much they were always there and and just were happy that they can be in the dl because from them nobody yeah. even thinks about maybe and that's either. how strong and it they... was right and now they're not like that yeah. Yeah, but they had time. They had time to to go be there five years or even spending and whatever. They're yeah. always at the bottom, and now you you can do something else. So that's what we didn't have. But like I said, the going up and down relegation is that's so so important be. for for hockey. Yeah, it, it's so for important German for hockey, hockey and for the Spielers to get some yeah. geld. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and just to have a goal. Also, I mean, they, you yes, have a goal, and and if you. It's the same to to stay and you league earn it. You the, earn it. You earn it. Either earn yeah. your way down yeah. to the second league, or you earn your way up to the first <laughs> yeah, league. That's right? True. That's true. You earn it either way. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't know what else I got other than like so I whatever with beating Heim. I haven't had that many guys on from my time at beating Heim, but it was because that first year where the guys I've had on is because that was the best time like I've ever had played hockey. I think it was the best I ever played hockey. Um, it was the best teammates like ever um, Cardiff's up there too. But like um, we were a family on and off the ice. And then when you're one of the leaders and the leading scorer, and then you see the culture change and you saw what it was like by that last year, and it was like, this happened on my watch. And it's like, this is what our culture is. And we're losing. And like, I don't know, some of it might've been out of our hands, but like, I know yourself and myself, we were doing everything we could to help the beating Heim Steelers win. Yeah. And we were yeah. fully bought in. Um, and I did have some hard feelings. I had some very hard feelings when I left and I got picked up in that van and I go to Hellbron. And then all of a sudden I'm on the biggest rivals team that like, for four years, I'm like, this is the team I hate. This is the team we got to beat. And I'm part of this community and I'm part of this town. And these are my teammates. And then the way it ended, um, it was sad. <laughs> and yeah. um, I didn't get over it for a very long time. I, I, you know, but like to think of getting invited back to your game and how much I appreciate that and how badly I want to flip and come. Um, I do know that 
there were teammates out there that wanted me to stay and wanted me there. And that's all I need, man. So thank you for the invite. I really <laughs> yeah, wish I could totally. come because beating yeah. I had meant a lot to myself and Lisa. And it was, geez, it was four years of our lives, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome life. Yeah, like I said, I would really would love to have you here. I, I, uh, for sure, I play with a lot of guys during my my career, but you're one of the first ones there on my list, and oh, uh, so that's. Dude. Uh, well, and then we yeah. got to actually be line mates for that year, and it's like oh, I say, playing yeah. with Justin was fun, and I had a great season. But the most goals I ever scored was playing with you, and it was because of how hard you worked, and you were a passer more than a shooter, and but you created opportunities based off your work ethic. And that's how you had the career you had. <laughs> God, I'm sick of saying nice things to you. We should shut it down. <laughs> no, we can call. We can keep going. That's okay for me. I need some, some, yeah. <laughs> somebody. Well, yeah, you're just out of the nice game. And... Nobody's saying all this stuff, but then yeah, you get to go back in front of all the fans <laughs> and see your jersey get retired. You're probably yeah, going to cry. That, eh? That's the only thing. Why You're going to get out there with Cora and the kids and you're going to cry yeah. in front of all the yeah. fans. <laughs> um yeah for me the my last game uh in at home was very very special i think we got beat 9-1 or something so we we were so bad the season was over for us so it was nothing but there was my family my friends they had uh hold up signings and after that i was really really emotional too and yeah it's yeah. cool that you got to and you know it's your, over. It's, but you got to leave I, the game on your own terms. You got to leave yeah. with one team yeah. in your whole professional career in 20 seasons. That's crazy. But that says a lot about who you are. And it's an obviously a no brainer that they retire your Jersey. Um, and congratulations, sir. Well done. <laughs> Five <Yeah>. championships <laughs> and two pokals. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. But maybe I have nights. to say too that that I played with an awesome guy too. He gets retired his jersey again That's right. with me, Matt McKnight. He played with me nine years in Bidikheim. He, he it was his home too. His, his kids yeah. are born here. I think they raised up. So um, I'm really happy to share this moment also with him. And uh, yeah, so you're doing he it was together. A part of eh? my, Yes, yeah, and he's a good friend, and I really love it that, that he's coming over again and we do it together. And yeah, no, that's cool. So then he had to go home then, and he's probably trying to figure out life after hockey and all that stuff. Eh? Yeah, yeah, he's coaching. He's coaching now too, uh, a college team next to Calgary. Don't don't I that's don't cool. know the name, but well, uh, tell, him, tell, tell, him wanna, tell him I'll tell him I'll I'll chat with him in the shed if he wants, even though he took my job and then so, got his jersey so, retired. So, so, so he said. <laughs> <laughs> he said he will he will watch this podcast for sure. Oh, hear this podcast for sure. So he just you can now send oh, your yeah. invitation for him. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And I actually got another Steeler legend booked. Uh, that said he's coming on is Craig Teeple, folks. I'm having all the guys on that got their jerseys retired and beating him. <laughs> Even if you told me to leave. <laughs> no, but seriously, I loved my time in beating him. I loved the guys that were on the team. I, 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 I loved the fans. I loved everything about it. I loved the arena, the old one, the new one sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, I really do appreciate the offer to come back because it does mean a lot to me. Um, I hated wearing gold helmets, but I like being a teammate and I like just being one of the guys and to think that you'd invite me back. It means a lot when you've been out of the game, you know? Thank you. Yeah. And well, well done, sir. like I said, you deserved it. I mean, I would, yeah, yeah. Well, well done, sir, and enjoy your night. And gosh darn it, I wish I was gonna be there. Uh, but like, I am gonna have fun in Cardiff at Batchy's testimony. I'm sure you have fun. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I gotta play hockey there too, so that's weird. <laughs> Might have to exercise before that, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have to I don't have much time. <laughs> yeah, well, this is your night, everybody's gonna be watching you, right? You yeah, that, that's a problem. <laughs> Wow, uh, it looks like the German food hasn't got to you like it got to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm used to it since I'm young, you know, so you you can That's have, right. I can yeah. it, I, hope. I, I I wasn't used to it. And then I get there and I'm like, what is all this? <laughs> I can't control myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And this has been another episode of Two L's and Hockey Tales with Shoofsy and Wally. <laughs>